Welcome to the OSRS podcast where we talk to RuneScape content creators about RuneScape content. I am Mitt Madcow, one of your hosts, followed by... What's going on, boys? Riggs, as always. Hello, Rice Cup here. And before my boy Ninerest says anything, I gotta introduce him. He is the White Wolf in RuneScape, one of my pupils that I have taught from the very young sensei ages how to pk in the wild he's also <laughs> does a lot of runescape rapping he was uh promoted by runescape himself with jimmy i mean there's a lot to say but uh glad to have you here nine rain welcome man hey glad to be here man hell yeah dude and so far i think we're gonna start off a little q a about uh my boy white wolf and uh i guess i'll start when you are learning pk so far what, what has been your best moment have you got like a juicy pk or um I did get, it was two episodes ago, which means it was a couple months ago, um, <laughs> and I got a, dra- it was a dragon crossbow. Yeah, and I, I was, I was in a call, it, we were doing like a content creator happy hour thing, and I was, so I was in a call with a bunch of people just chilling, thank God I had my recorder on, because we were all going to go PK in the wild. And it, I mean, I think I was one of two people out of the 10 that maybe knew what they were doing. And so I was just getting there early and thought I'd, you know, run by Callisto or something. And I ran into another PK or just picked a fight, k- kicked his ass, smited him, got a, and I, I've never had a dragon crossbow on any account before. So it was my first time like actually seeing the item. So that was pretty cool. Um, Dude, I mean, anytime you PK something dragon, especially your first time, yeah. it's not when your heart oh, goes, yeah. oh, dude, I it did just, it. I did it. Yep. You know, and then and then I played RuneScape three for about a week, and uh, in on like day one, I I went out to the wild and was found this bot farm and was killing random bots, huh. ran into another guy who was doing the same thing, and then oh no, we've we've lost. We, we had to kick him out. It's, you know, he'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Back? There he is. There he Welcome is. Back, brother. Yo, um, yo, that was great. Random event. Number two, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I just um, <laughs> I'm back now. Hey, all good, so bro, we all were, good. Yeah, we were killing this. Uh, I was killing these bots, running to another guy who was also began the same bot farm. And so I killed him and got a fury. And 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 like day one of me ever playing R3 PK to Fury, which took me years and years to do on OSRS. That's so. talent, bro. Did your skill from old school transfer down to RS3, or were you just clicking random shit? Yeah, I, absolutely not, dude. That <laughs> game is completely different. There's, I mean, yeah, no, not at all. Good old uh, before we get deeper into the Q and A with my boy Nine Rain, we got to say last video we got what 150 likes on the last podcast with Alfie. If we can hit 300 this time, all right. Oh, uh, we got my boy dude. Nine Rain. You haven't yeah, just please. you haven't just done our boy a cold one like that. Come on, <laughs> yeah, bro. The one. Come on, <laughs> dude. Come on, dude. Oh my oh, god, I skipped man. all of my Oh, I'm Yo, sorry. this is why he doesn't give back. the podcast a shout out, dude. <laughs> he's, he's never coming back now. <laughs> well, guessed wrong, bro. We no, you all did. have a cold one on like multiple times, dude. There's nothing but upside for that, man. Uh, but if we get 300 likes in this podcast, you guys are liking old school podcasts, old school RuneScape. We also have. Nine Rain, who has the Bank Standing podcast, another old school RuneScape podcast. So we're starting to break loose, boys. This is now the meta. So throw some likes, and we'll get some more kind of creators. The International on. RuneScape Podcast Association. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna start like a league. Nice. <laughs> we're gonna start a league and get like a really big table and have like twenty people during one podcast every time. Yeah, now. we gotta press a button to talk, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yo, Nine Rain, I got a question for you. So, yeah, I know. Uh, we previously had a very, I'd say, short conversation, maybe like a year ago or so. Uh, I think it was in the old school RuneScape uh, Discord, like the uh, content creator one. And it was mm-hmm. in regards to there being some sort of entry level for PvP. Uh, and I uploaded a video at the time, and I think you may have watched it or you commented about it. Yeah, 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 I watched that video. Yeah, so I was wondering, because like, your series, and I have to give you props, man, you, your series is absolutely sick bro the production you put into that i i I literally watch everyone they're really good and if you guys haven't heard of nine rain you should definitely check this guy out but um because you start you basically effectively tried to get a kill at every combat bracket right starting from three all the way to one two six great concept um have you found that by doing that that it's kind of been like a slow and steady 
uh, increase in difficulty as the time's gone along? Or has it just been completely random in terms of, like, skills of uh, your opponents and such? No, it's definitely gotten harder and harder. It pretty much linearly. And th there's a couple pain points on the account because... Um with certain restrictions with quests uh i couldn't get uh quest experience for really keystone quests to get specific items or prayers or whatever um because completing that quest would get me uh, so much experience that i would get two combat levels yeah. so i had to delay a lot of that so there were a couple of pain points where i'm in a, quite a bit worse gear than other uh opponents but so there were some weird areas like that. And then um, when I first started Venge fighting, that I'd never done that before at all. And that was like a completely different beast. Uh, when I first started Will DPKing, I'd never done that at all. That The amount of knowledge that you'd need to not just die stupidly in the wild, uh, I it, it's kind of... I don't know that you could get into it without having someone like Minty or someone or a friend like show you around. It was, you could just like, uh, like wandering into multi or a team showing up and kicking your ass or you not having the right gear. Like I didn't, I didn't even know what a good setup was. So there were a lot of learning curves in that regard. Um, but now that I'm doing, I've, I've switched the challenge early was to get a kill at every combat level, which was hard because you would start running out of experience and you would get close to the combat level. And so you, and then you, it's hard to kill people at level three up to level like 30. There's no way to, you know, KO someone. So I had to get really creative. Uh, and sometimes I was killing uh, looters or, you know, like pretty easy prey. Yeah. But pretty much since about level 60, I've been fighting PVPers or PKers. Mm -hmm. Um, and the upper, like w combat level 100 and up, the people got, they're good. <laughs> like <laughs> they got a lot better and I still run into some pretty bad fighters. Like, um, in my first Venge fighting video, my first Venge kill is versus this dude with a DDS and like rune and is obviously quite bad even worse yeah. than me enough that while fighting him, I was like, wow, this guy's worse than I am. That's awesome. <laughs> um, and so, you know, occasionally there's people out there that are pretty new, but most of the, m most of them, if I see an Inferno Cape, there's a good chance I'm not going to fight him. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I, those people like, too. I don't know why it scares me. It just yeah. Scare no, them. Maybe they bought it, but if they didn't, I'm Either about to way. get dropped. Yeah, yeah. Um, decent, you know yeah. they're like right. a higher caliber of player. <laughs> either either they're good enough to get an inferno cape, or they're good enough at PvP that they think it's worth their time to spend the amount of money it would take to get an inferno cape. Yeah. So either way, I'm like, I fought one dude and he chanced me like three times, and I was just it was a mess, and I was like sorry bro uh, no rematch you're you win <laughs> it's fine um fair enough but yeah fair it's enough, definitely man. it's definitely getting more difficult as the combat levels get higher the players yeah. are just a lot better so that that's an interesting thing because i you know if, if you're like w what combat level are you right now what is your combat? 102. 102 so you've then. affected you've effectively killed what's that like at least 99 people because you start as level three 102 will be the 100th kill i've, I've killed Damn. many more but you know per level doing the challenge yeah yeah nice. so it, it's interesting because it's like i don't know one might assume that after that many pks which is a decent amount that you would feel more and more confident but i i, I guess my second question is sort of bridging into in terms of there being some sort of entry level for PvP, like you said, you know, you had to get Minus Mad Cow to uh, tutor you through. Definitely for not, not, not a good decision, by the way. This TBR hey. over here splashes hey, every I, I, was, I know <laughs> I was scraping the bottom of the barrel, but you gotta oh. start somewhere, man. Like, I don't... You know what? You know, I'll take I what I can it. get. But, uh, you have to go to the dairy farms, bro. <laughs> my follow-up question is, uh, do you have any... Maybe as somebody who's struggling through that yourself right now, do you have any suggestions... For something that possibly could be good for people that are trying to get into PvP as an entry level. Yeah. Um aside from find if 
a friend or a discord or someone to help you that would be massive um the second thing i would say is <clears throat> put a good amount of money aside and just consider it spent at, at, at and and completely lost and be okay losing all of it and get yep. over the fear of losing stuff because i learned very quickly that screwing around doing zora or vorkath and not paying attention and and wasting time which can directly correlate to gaining money in pvm in a very like one to one kind of way i'll lose more money doing pvm and those kind of things than than i'll lose in pvp and it might sting a little more um because you're like oh man i just got killed and all my loot belongs to someone else but if you're being smart about not risking too much when you're learning you really don't it's not that expensive and you don't lose too much um, yeah especially with the current you can i mean but stuff's cheap right now um thankfully the g mall actually costs more than it i think has in a long time don't know why that's the case both the g mall and the handle's a decent price but other than that like but gear is real cheap right now so um I'd yeah, say put right. aside a bunch of money and just go for it. Dude, the G-Mall is 160k right now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's because they disappear every time you put a handle on it. And then the yeah. handles disappear as well and turn into cash. So you got two items disappearing and turning into cash. But the item top, sinks. It's a good item sink. Add on top mm. of that idea for uh, new PKers, man. I like the whole setting aside some money. And not it's not yours anymore. You can lose it. That's how I merch. And it's painful, <clears throat> but I'm learning, right? Kind of. But yeah. I, I term the the I coined the term suicide runs, right? And this is for people wanting to get into deep wild PKing. And I'll just cover this slightly, but get like 10 sets of gear. You don't feel like you would want to lose, but it's not gonna kill your bank. Go into wild, dress up in that gear anywhere, just roam, even if you don't know where you're going, and get a kill. Don't bank until you've either died, which then obviously you're near a bank, or you have a kill. Call a suicide run. Do that 10 times. You're going to be feeling a lot better in the wild. I don't know if yep. you get a lot more kills, but you're going to feel a lot better. Dude, I could just really like, will. I just picture kids going into KBD and just getting like dropped by the black <laughs> dragon, bro. Just like, fuck this. What is this? Dude? Yeah. Hey, it'll be I mean, honestly, I think, that, I think that is a wonderful idea. That is such a good tactic to force yourself to get over like losing your gear. Because Why, yo, nine rain, we could do that as a video, man. I could be on Discord and I could I, I'll see 10 suicide runs, man. We'll see how like, they Yeah, man. Go. That sounds fun to me. <laughs> Dude, really I, I I still have to tell myself, like, you know, remind myself to get over losing something that's I mean Pixels. Yeah, yeah it's just pixels, man. Just pixels. Yeah. That that well, what is the most that you've risked and what is the most that you've lost so far? I've stupidly lost randomly like maybe three mil four mil well, i'm talking like a tome of fire g mall um so uh what else would it have been you add an aram staff my majorina two cape and a couple other you know semi fancy things on a cold like you were Britain, boy yeah like uh, yeah britting pro uh -huh. yeah and uh just uh, you know i've I think I've never lost more than three mil. I've never lost an AGS, though I've been smited uh, and chanced a decent amount of times yeah. where I just got lucky. But yeah, you know. Right. That you reminds me of no. <laughs> Hey, look, I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm rich. It's okay. You know? Yeah, I you think of it as charity. You wouldn't Yo, okay. I have a I have a I have a interesting idea. So, you know, we're we're talking about how it's kind of hard for people to get into PvP. But you know how like they changed it where where if you do like Zora, for example, right? Your first 50 KC is like, you don't pay anything or whatever, yeah. right? And once you hit it, you start paying whatever you die with, 100K. But like, so so I know that unfortunately because of the way the culture is nowadays where you're pretty much expected to just not risk much anywhere. Mm -hmm. So like the wilderness, obviously, it's kind of like the only place where the risk can be extremely substantial and people are... They're so like cus you know accustomed to just not risking, which I think is a big part of why it's so hard for people to get into like normal wilderness PvP. It's that they they're just not used to it anymore, and they get pissed because it's like something oh, that they get so mad. that's so, so mad. out of the, you know the the day to day, right? Like they die Zora, who cares? It's hundred K, right? 
But like, I'm thinking, what if in the wilderness, like maybe it's a system where like their first ten deaths, they don't like they don't lose more than just you know they just keep the their stuff, right? If that makes sense, like their first ten deaths. No, <laughs> if there were, dude, 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 like, like nah, dude, listen, dude, I, dude, dude, nah, dude, dude, I, I can't, you, I, buddy. Or like the first ten PKs. You, you know, need to, I, you I need to expand on this, man. There's definitely potential there. Yeah, that's what but, I'm saying. I'm not saying specifically that I that like number or amount. I'm just saying like, what if there's a system where it it like makes it so that it's not as punishing for people just exploring the wilderness for the first few times or whatever, or or like getting to PV PKing for the first few times or whatever. I, don't I know. see. I, I see okay. your point, but yeah. at the same time, it's like if they, mm -hmm. you know, my suicide suicide run idea, or just going in the wild butt naked exploring is always an option, you know. Yeah, like yeah. How but, I put it so. is like if you were gonna play Warzone and you only got a pistol, and I'm sitting right next to you, I'm not gonna let you go because yeah. you're trying to explore. I'm gonna gun you down. I, I play like that on RuneScape too. If you're mm -hmm. not gonna bring food or hide into the wild, you're gonna run around. Yeah, I'm gonna find out what you're risking every time. I yeah, I know. I think the I think a big problem right now is just the fact that most players are just so accustomed to, you know, safe deaths. So, so, so it's either you you try to encourage people to not care as much about that idea and change up their perspective, but like, yeah, unless you have a way to encourage them to go into the wilderness without like being as fearful at the start, you know, it getting is hard comfy to with yeah. it. But do, go dude, right like do, do you know part. how you could yeah. do that? You could do yeah. something which I don't think Jagex have ever done on old school. In fact, I know they haven't, which is trying to make PvP fun. Okay. So I personally think the wildy should stay exactly the way it is. I'm old school, dude. I don't want it to change. I don't want the mechanics to change. Um, we were briefly talking before the podcast about Tarkov. Uh, I don't know how much of the audience have played Escape from Tarkov, but just as a quick rundown, uh, effectively, it's a battle royale. You spawn into a map. Uh, you can play as two different characters, either a PMC, which is you take your own loot in there, or you can play as a scav, where you get given a randomized loadout. Basically, a, Are you a about random... to talk about RuneScape scav idea? Because that would be yeah, cool. Well, what I'm about to say is... Scav loadout sounds pretty dope. Yeah, dude, right, I, I was thinking, like, they haven't tried to make it fun. Uh, they haven't tried to make it fun at all. Like, they've added the competitive edge to it, but we all know that competitiveness isn't fun unless you're winning and if you're brand new to doing it you're not going to enjoy it because you're not going to be winning and uh i had this idea which was effectively why don't they just take like escape from tarkov and just make something called like escape from wilderness or something like that where you could effectively have like specific worlds for it like you go into a lobby uh you get spawned into random points in the wilderness and then you get given uh, a place that you have to escape from so imagine you spawn at rune rocks and it's like, you need to get down to the crazy archaeologist. That's how you escape. That's where your escape is. And uh, you lose all your stuff. But th this is the thing. It's like, you would only be losing your time. It's hard to explain I would like if you if haven't you played Tarkov. You're into it. You well, know, like Tarkov does. This, this, you this is the gear, thing. Really yeah, but the thing is, you get that gear within the minigame. So it would effectively be like, there would be almost like two game lot of items, if that makes sense. Because the items that you'd have in the minigame would be separate from your own items that you had in the real game. They'd be items that you acquire from that mini game, and then you could choose to use them, hoard them. And I, I, I don't know. It, it, it's hard to really explain because I'd have to explain the whole concept of Tarkov. Yeah. But the idea of the idea of scav runs in RuneScape, because Tarkov is an extremely punishing game to learn, yeah. and has a, like a massively steep learning curve, kind of oh, like huge. RuneScape, where yeah. uh, where it's just full of items and things that aren't obvious and that you don't know how you would learn unless someone told you uh and and scav runs really made that process 10 times more forgiving because you get shit on in your you know pmc run and then you'd be like well i can always just do another scav run and it was kind of like this cool down mental reset and a, and a good practice tool to you know get out there and not yeah. lose your stuff yeah. Tom, like it's it, a sick it, idea though it it, really it's is. just it's just a little idea i was thinking about the other day and it's it, it's something jagex could they could do it down to a t like if they set select worlds for that and i wouldn't stay on the subject for too long but like mm. if they had select worlds and it had the grand exchange was still there but it was like you could only use the grand exchange in that world for items from that mini game and like, like the entire world was based on that mini game like there, there just isn't enough at like 
that wouldn't necessarily be entry level, but it could be a lot of fun. Like, here's the thing. It's like, you don't get people to do things that they don't enjoy, right? It has to be something which is appealing. And the, the great thing about Tarkov, like you said, is there's that really, really intense, like hard learning curve and aspect to it where you go in and lose all your shit and it sucks when it happens. And then there's scav runs where you just get to fuck around and you just kill scavs, loot their gear, and then you escape. And you may even take down a player in the process if you're lucky, you know? So it's like no risk, but you get a lot of reward. But you, there's Tom, a, a catch. You can only do one every 20 minutes, yeah. which is good. Tom, Tom, your idea, man, is really sick. I don't know about the whole Grand Exchange, but what if they had just like worlds where you could do this like you said, and you could bring your own gear. Maybe they have certain items you couldn't bring, like crystal shields or bulwarks, because they're kind of bullshit, right? <laughs> And then you have people who can do scav accounts. You start out at like Zerikin's ancient staff, the basics. Yeah. Different locations in the wild. You can go and farm bosses or kill players. You can't take your scav gear with you, right? If you lose it, you lose it. If you bank it, it disappears. But anything you get in the wild, you keep. So if you PK other players or if you farm monsters, maybe they can make the monsters even better. There could be a time limit. And then obviously, uh, you know, 20 minutes if you die, you can't do a scav again for 20 minutes, but you can go in in your own gear, right? You can hunt. Yeah. I would love that idea. That's really cool. That's a really sick idea, man. Mm. Makes me sad because we talk about really cool PvP ideas. Yeah. And then I go back in the wild. I'm like, all right, back to this. You know, so, <laughs> back so, to reality. <laughs> so I think a lot of the PvP ideas is that obviously there there's the high bear entry, right? There's a lot of... There's like, you know, a lot of the PvPers are already very seasoned and they're just way above anybody that's learning, right? So if there's a way to implement something in whatever ideas you guys want to do to to kind of balance it out a bit more where so it's like not so I guess one-sided, right? Cuz like yeah. obviously right right now for example, if you do like last man standing, if you're an experienced birder, you're, you're going to clap the dude's ass, like, you know, yeah. 10 out of 10 times, you know? And, and I can tell you what, it doesn't feel good so. being on either ends of that. It doesn't feel good be the person <laughs> clapping, and it doesn't feel good being the person getting clapped. Like, if I, I kill... If I, dude, I, I played <laughs> I LMS for, it. like... I played LMS for four hours today. Dude, when I kill somebody in, like, five hits, I'm like, that's so boring. Like, well, that, that was wild, not fun though. at all. Like, it just isn't fun. When I fight somebody and it comes down to, like, the last, like, 10 HP, I'm like, good fight, bro. That was fucking wicked. You know what I mean? But, like, I feel yeah. like the easy solution for that is we're going to beat a dead horse here, but it's simply just having some sort of rank system where it would effectively be uh, you go into whatever the arena is, you fight somebody in the same loadout. If you lose 10 fights, you go against somebody who lost 10 fights. If you won 10 fights, you fight against someone who won 10 fights. It it's pretty simple and just try and get people at similar skill levels, and then it eventually balance out, and you'll have people that are bad, and people that are really good, and people can be in the middle, people can progress, they can get worse, and so forth. Like, oh, it, yeah. it's, not, mean, that, it's so, not that difficult. Yeah, yeah. so it, more so, like, let, let's say you're doing, like, the whole uh, Battle Royale stuff, right? So would you would you want the ELO system to also work for that? No, if, 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 not, not no. at all, no. I, I think no. with the Battle Royale idea, that would simply be just like a mini game for PvP. Ball speed, baby. Ball and speed, it, it would be like, you can go in as a noob, or you can go in as a pro. It is what it is. All right. Okay, so no rings for that. Yeah, that might be Seriously. a big problem for people. Yeah, fucking that, that uh, Tarkov idea has a lot of promise. I just wish the J mods would be like, yeah. What was that? You know? Cause if, yeah. Man, well, th that that's, the, the, that's the hardest yeah. thing about it, man. It's like, you can have the best idea in the world, and the the reality is, unless Jagex actually want to put the resources into that, it's never going to happen. Like, it just yeah. hasn't happened. I've seen some of the most amazing, like, homemade PvP ideas over the last few years, and uh, I've literally seen none of it come into the game. Uh, so it, it's basically that. And I think it is important to talk about it as well, because if you have a good idea, and the people that are watching this are like, oh, damn, that sounds really good, and people talk about it, it's like, is that not how you get stuff done? Yep. It's and like, you gotta get the most upvoted on Reddit, everything, that's pretty much how stuff happens. Everything but. starts with an idea, and you just throw that idea out into the world, and then if it, you know, gets some legs or some bearing, that's kind of where you see these beautiful things take off, man. That's just kind of, it's like we, we make things with our minds, you know? You think about it, humans just make ideas, ideas go in the world, you got buildings, companies, yeah. Hopefully Dude, PvP updates. <laughs> mate, <laughs> oh, no. do you know what? The, the funny thing is, right, and I, I don't know if any of you relate to this, but, like, 
I used to PK all the time. That's all I did. I don't PK at all now. I do the occasional LMS. I was doing it today on the hardcore Iron Man just so I could get GP. Um, because I was selling rune arrows. But what, like, made if you I, start, what, what made you start PKing at the very beginning, like when you were because it, it was little boy, dude. Be, all right here, dude. I can tell you a quick. I was a little boy. My brother, mm -hmm. my brother was playing old school RuneScape. I had no idea what it was. He had his friend rounds, and I was just looking at them. They were playing this game, and they were like nerding out. They were they were running through the wilderness as a level three. And they were like, the deeper we go, the better loot we find. And they like found the Chaos uh, Rune Spawn next to Moss Giants. And then they died with all their stuff. And I just remember watching <laughs> it. I was just there like witnessing it. I was just like, oh my God, this is so cool. And they were explaining to me with so much passion. You know, in the wilderness, people can come and just take all your items. They're going to kill you and take everything. And I was, as a kid, I was just like, oh my God, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> so yeah. I, I, I just got straight into PvP because of that. And uh, I did pvp solely for like at least 10 years i had no interest in any aspect of the game apart from pvp that was it um so you I, played on a main, uh, on a main account and just had like some kind of pure build and, and then would just go pk in the wild so to begin with i was really bad on runescape as most of us were when we were young uh so it took me a long time to finally get like barry gloves vengeance and stuff um I remember the day or the week, sorry, that I got 94 magic to either use Vengeance or to use Ice Barrage uh, was the same week the Bounty Hunter Craters came out. So oh. when BH Craters came out, I think that was like 2006. That was when I started to hybrid. Before then, I was just doing Edgeville, like Room Pecan, and that was like the era of like IK Soy I. If any of you guys remember who that is, let us know in the comments. Are you talking um, Kiasi? He was a he was an Edgeville DH PK and he risked absolutely bank. Uh, I think Everyone, was, real quick, favorite PKers, dude. That's yeah, his. Dude. Mine's Lord Makeup. Anyone else? Elf Come Mage. On. Elf Mage. You got one. Nine red. Yeah, uh, Elf Mage. Oh, I thought that was right. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> dude, we all know that. We all know that. Dude, we all know Ree's favorite PKers. Is me. Come on, don't put him on the spot, boys. Yeah, uh, I'd say <laughs> Mint and Rixie. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I swear I saw Rice's mouth move. I don't know why. Cool. My right. my favorite. P I, okay, I'll, 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 I'll tell you, place, mine, you know? No one to know my favorite P care because it was like really old school. But it was a guy called Skeletor, and he was a Mage Bank P care. Like back when we were like level twenties and we had full Mithril, this guy was a level hundred and twenty six at Mage Bank and full Arims. Like this guy was literally a god. Like back in the day, days, bro. yeah. Um, but yeah, that that's basically how I got into PvP. And I went down the rabbit hole of like, I was in single clans, I was in multi-clans. I, I pretty much did everything regarding PvP there was to do. I PK'd through every single era of it. Um, and then in, in the early days of Old School RuneScape coming out, I was still in single clans. But uh, I took a break between uh, RuneScape 2 turning into RuneScape 3 because I quit at that time. And then Old School first coming out. And um, I think in those, I think it was two years that I didn't play the game for, I, I thought about the game a lot. I thought about the beauty of the game and how much I loved, like, you know, the fantasy of RuneScape and, like, the entire world. And I, I just used to think I would do anything just to be sat in, like, Lumbridge Castle and just taken in the aesthetics of the place. That's so when I, came, when I came back to old school, my mindset had changed quite a lot. And I started to do uh, Slayer for the first time. I'd never, never done Slayer before kind of deal. And uh, it got to a point where I would rather be killing Abyssal Demons than I would be on a PK trip. So I kind of, I, I shifted, but my heart's always remained with PvP. And the main yeah. reason it happened as well is that nothing has changed for PvP. It's hard to be, like, for me, it's hard to be excited about killing somebody for loot when you've done it for so long. Like, nothing's yeah. changed. It's exactly... The fundamentals are the exact same. And it's not that I dislike it. It's just... there. It needs... Like, it's over 10 years, man. It's The game's gone up to, like, 20 years. It's like the fact that the wildies basically remained the same. Slash, in old school, there's been basically no, no PvP updates aside from LMS is probably the best I can think of. It's like, there just needs to be more. You know what I mean? I'd love it to yeah. win my heart back, but it, it's not going to happen if they don't touch it. Yeah. Well, All right, so I'm suggestion to Reddit viewers. Let's go. <laughs> I, I have one question. One more question for my boy Nine Rain. Um, first, mm -hmm. comment your favorite PK or if you have an old school PK or they used to watch back in the day with the 
bodies fall into the floor music and stuff. The good oh, days. Dude. Yeah, those good days. And then we'll jump into a topic that's a little close to what we're talking about already. But yeah, I gotta do my QA next though. Oh, you got one more? Oh my bad. Um, I, haven't, I haven't asked him, but yeah, go, go. You go finish it. Oh boy, nine rain, dude. Once you finish this series, is there any hope you can do the same exact series, but on a hardcore? <laughs> oh <laughs> I have a couple more fun pk uh ideas and unique accounts and stuff yeah. a hardcore is not one of them now <laughs> there's, you know what? Dude, there's it could be a bonus no series way. what's a and, sub goal you're going for what's a sub goal right now you're going for man well a sub goal to do a, to do a hardcore well a hardcore but you get a kill every level 100k uh, you want me to all i have to do is try it give me 100k Easy. 100K? I mean, right, I'll, I'll try. I'll, I'll, I'll try to you. do it 100K, man. I mean, I'll give it a good <laughs> shake. I'll do my best, but it ain't going to... I make no promises that this is going to be like 10, 20 episodes. It might be quite short. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm okay with one episode, man. Every time you take like 20 damage, just teleport. It okay. would be actually super interesting because the early levels would be even shittier. You, when you make Getting it. the supplies and the... the it just... I think it'd be really good. Getting the supplies without getting the level would be probably extremely difficult. And then getting a kill? Hmm. It's worth considering. Could you imagine you do this crazy route and then your first kill you die? Yeah. (laughs) It's like a two-week route to level up and all of a sudden dead. I'm actually working on a UIM PK right now. What Um, the hell? Well, yeah. And most of the theory crafting is around getting unlocks and a build that I can like rebuild in a decent amount of time oh, and then okay. also kind of in a cool. good combat bracket that uh you can I destroy can a lot of dodge if i need to and i will have to be getting like you die i have to go restart all my supplies and everything so i like, it though. I like that i but it, i i've done some theory crafting the account has been at the barb fish and gulag for a while um it's looking pretty decent so we'll see <laughs> I'm excited, man. I'm excited. All right. Uh, it's right my team, buddy. Yeah, man. All right. So, so I probably know Nine Rain the least, but I've seen some of your stuff flying around, you know, especially with music stuff. So, how, what, what's, what's the deal behind the music, you know, like the drumming and stuff? Like, how, how did you start that kind of hobby or work, or, or are you working like a, as a job with it? Or, and like, how does that kind of tie in with your RuneScape kind of like, I guess it's a loaded question, right? It's a few questions. Because, like, so, like, when you started RuneScape, I don't know when you did, but, like, was there, how did you kind of decide to merge those two ideas together, you know? Yeah. Like some so, of your projects. Yeah, I, uh, I started drumming when I was 11. Um, I don't remember if I expressed interest in it or what, but for one Christmas, my parents got me a drum set and then got my twin adam an electric guitar and then uh we started taking lessons and uh the you know the rest is history i've I've been playing ever since i played earlier today um did your parents want you to make a rock band when you were growing up (laughs) i mean i think maybe we had been throwing the idea around and our parents were like what the hell not like uh, buy them some instruments i guess um and so uh yeah i mean i've been drumming ever since Uh, 18 going on 18 years um and uh, I mostly played an acoustic set. Um, I did drumline in high school, really liked that, uh, but mostly been a set player. Um, and then I have an electric kit now that I'm in my, uh, and th- that's the one that I record videos with, uh, which I pretty much just put on like Twitter sometimes. Um, and uh, there are some actual, like, as far as RuneScape content goes, my music has just been like, like rapping which i was doing just i don't even know why i did the first one i think i uh-huh. thought of something funny i was like ah that'd be funny it was pretty and sweet it, and it was like five minutes and i had a thing and i was like i actually kind of liked it and i was like yeah we'll put that in a video um and then everybody really seemed to like it so i did a couple more um and then uh at the same time jimmy was doing by re- like the early episodes of by release and was releasing a lot of uh, songs in those. And then when Jagex hit him up to do the uh, Trailblazer song, he hit me up, and then we 
I have a friend named Tal uh, who's a producer. And so then us three all got together and did, and did that whole video. Um, I actually have a lot of really cool ideas to incorporate drumming um, actually in a RuneScape video based on the tick system. Um, because RuneScape, especially for you um, Rice Cup with your PVM stuff, all runs off of a it's yeah. 100 beats per minute. I can't get away from it, dude. Yeah, it, I mean, I bet someone timed that. I bet that was close. I think it was a little slow. I think yeah. that was close to like 94. Rice but is the only beats, one who can time it. But 100 I don't beats, time it. I just feel no, it. No, no. Yeah, well, you just, wow. you just feel it after a while. You just like, so, uh, 100 beats per minute is our 0. 0.6 uh, <laughs> seconds per tick. Mm -hmm. And so I have an idea. God, I probably mentioned this a hundred times, but I've, I'm making myself not do these videos until I complete my current goal for Iron Man and finish White Wolf, or I'll just never finish those series. Um, yeah. But to, I'm going to take some of the more complicated uh, PVM uh, like situations or, or something fun like doing a three-way switch at demonic gorillas <laughs> and uh take the rhythm of the switch and the rhythm of the attack cycles and the prayer switches and the sounds and the rhythms of the game and then put that to a drum beat and uh i make a really cool video with it um so yeah. i think i i haven't yeah. even started those i like those videos but i have a lot of really cool ideas um and then maybe like you could do a you could do a video based on Vorkath and then it's just the whole all the different um interactions and rhythms that go along just doing Vorkath or doing a Wook's walk or you know whatever yeah there's so many little sounds that happen throughout the fight you yeah know, you must really yeah. know your music man if you can if you can 18 years man I don't yeah. yeah and also you must have the coolest parents ever man if they try to encourage you to get into right? drums and make a band dude <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm a Volca, dude. Come on. <laughs> in hindsight, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, it was. That's yeah. sick, bro. My parents got me a bike so I could get out the house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they were thinking. They got their kid a drum set. Thankfully, I was like opposite corner uh, of the house, but I bet uh, that sounded awful for years. <laughs> Probably until I moved out. <laughs> it's okay. not a quiet instrument to learn on, so. Well, the follow-up question to that. So you said you're living in an apartment. Um, mm -hmm. you have, you got neighbors, like, close by. Yep. Do, like, electric. Do they so right now, it's, it's an electric kit that uh, it's not hooked up to an amp or anything. I put it in my headphones. Uh, um, and it's not super quiet. If no electric it, drums? Wow. Like, yeah, like what? electric pianos. Yeah, but, like, it's... Well, that's weird to me. Go check out my Twitter. I think I, I probably my pinned... Tweet is like I've seen a, a couple of your, but I always thought it was like loud, you know. I don't know. It's I'd loud in my head. head. And, you know, <laughs> like technology is just yeah, dude. It's crazy, mind, and, and it is a pretty, game, and pff, I can't handle this. I don't know. And it is pretty loud because I'm hitting those things pretty damn hard, and uh but nothing compared to like a ripped biceps from that. You know? Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> dude it's all up, man. Don't even don't let that fur coat. You know, he's got yeah. some. Python's under there, man. Yeah, he's trying to keep it hidden. You know, those oh, guns, man. They're illegal. Tucked away, man. <laughs> <laughs> keep some holsters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so good, man. So we're doing a lot of Q&A here. Um, and, but before... I'm done with that. I'm done with mine. We were talking about kind of like wilderness updates and Nine Rain. You had, you had a subject we didn't really write down, but I thought since it flowed so well about talking about how RuneScape doesn't need a lot of updates to have fun in the game, like some people are just complaining for no reason, mm -hmm. right? If you could go into more depth, because I'm trying to catch that idea in my head. Yeah, right yeah. So I, like, there's a lot of problems that RuneScape has that aren't RuneScape problems. They're just problems. And maybe they can't even be solved. So let's take one, for example, that's like pretty classic for MMOs, and that's power creep. That exists ah. in real life. That's just life moving forward. That like technology in real life is power creep. We, we outdate jobs and tools and civilizations and all kinds of things like throughout history. That just happens. Yep. And so the devaluing of these older styles of working and doing and 
producing is not like a RuneScape problem. It's not even an MMO problem. It's just a, and I'm not even sure it's a problem. It's just a thing that we have to deal with. And I think there's really interesting ways that something like Jagex can do to preserve an old game because people like, I don't know, logging into a fresh account and just walking over and mining and being like, whoa, I got some more. Like, that's fun. And and especially like the first time you do it and you see your level go up, you get like 10 mining and you're like, this is sick. But that experience has nothing to do with the way that we play the game. No. Uh, but, but a lot of old school RuneScape is that to a lot of people. So um, I'm trying to think uh, other problems that RuneScape has that are just... Well, there's a ton, right? Like, yeah. I mean, you got people oh. who PVM that are always think, fighting the PKers, mm-hmm. and there's people PKing yeah. that are fighting the skillers because yeah. they have some weird beef going on. And it's yeah, like, yeah. why yeah. is there a beef? You all play Dude. RuneScape. What's going to on? Add to, to add to the point of the power creep, I don't think it's necessarily... Because, I, I, like, obviously, right, when people play the game, a lot of people are casual players. They only think about it in a very surface level idea, right? So, like, yes, power creep is something that you can't like solve necessarily so so if you want to go into more more specific i think it's more so the rate of power creep that mm-hmm. could be a problem right because yeah. for example right like when when you when you uh, at least when we started playing old school there's this idea that like a lot of traditional values were to be preserved right and it could be as simple as making the whip stay relevant for example, yep. right? And and so far, so good, right? The whip to this day, uh, how, how old is old school now? Like seven years, it's still pretty relevant. So they've done their job in that regard, right? But but of course, we still have newer things that are stronger, right? Like obviously, Scythe is far stronger than a whip under the right conditions. Mm-hmm. But but I think, yeah, it's it's more so the rate of, of power creep, right? Because like sometimes... If they introduce something like a blowpipe, right, that was so ahead of its time, it actually forces every other content in the future to kind of match up with it. Yep. Right, because of that one item that came out four years ago, every new big content, whether it's a boss or whether, you know, it's like an item like Twisted Bow, they all have to match up to that one single item, right? So I think that is an example of a problem where because of that, we accelerated how fast we need to move the game forward and it, it kind of destabilizes a lot of things right because like stability i think is important mm-hmm. and that's why like you know blowpipe for example it's it's now tr- being fixed you know after so long you, you know what i mean it should have yeah. been done a long time ago right like like i think power creep will happen for sure but i think it's important to understand the the rate of which we introduce stronger things because like in real life oftentimes we, anything that's better or whatever it doesn't matter how much or how how big like people are usually happy with that but like you know in this game where people value traditionalism and like kind of like uh you know just a bit more on the conservative side they want new updates but at the same time right we have to like be careful with how how fast we're gonna change everything you know because like yeah. for example the the day the whip becomes super like abysmal and just Kind of like really, RuneScape 3, you know? You know, very luckluster. That's kind of like a part of the old school value being gone, right? Yeah. It's, you know, so. But yeah, power creep is, in general, not something you can just fix. No way. It's just yeah. it's just how we can kind of Every manipulate MMO it. Has it. Yeah. yeah. But it seems I mean, like they are trying to battle it, though. At least yeah, yeah, they, they some fronts. What they're yeah. not battling is the power creep of GP into the game, right? If we can call it that, right? Like, money makers are just continuously... You know, until they hit that point where everyone does it, and then they're like, "Oh, all these items are yeah, in the game." Yeah, yeah, I think it's more so the item sync. That, that's that's a problem that um, you know, I don't know if you, what you that are thinking they of. Probably, problems, but yeah. They probably could tackle that one though, right? Like yeah. Money, I think, money supply power creep, I'd imagine, yeah. is solvable at you know any ideas that they could bring but, out. Um, yeah. What what other like problems were you thinking that people talk about all the time? Social media for RuneScape that. It's more well, of a broad problem, I guess. I actually thought it was interesting that you brought up the conservative values of old school RuneScape players because it does match, like, I mean, w- as players, we went through this period in time where basically most players felt betrayed by Jagex because in their eyes, they ruined the game that everybody liked. And so Jagex had, has seen from their end 
mo- the polling system and all the updates or lack thereof to old school as a campaign to win back the trust of the players so they can just because in a healthy game I think that they you update the game a lot if you look back to what people remember as the glory days of RuneScape there were game changing updates all the time releasing oh, yeah. arrows and God Wars dungeon and stuff like that um, oh, dude this and, is oh man we're gonna and, and, and I think cool. updates are good overall yeah and it was just part of the game but yeah. because they fucked it up pretty bad, <laughs> like they're, they're still yeah, yeah, yeah. been trying to win yeah. back the trust of the players. I think we're kind of at a. It's not. I think we're kind of at a crux where, like, now you can see the conservatives. Like, how oh, what's? I think it's G.K. Chesterton had a quote. Um, I think you said something like. Conservatives are there to make the same stupid mistake over and over again, and liberals are there to make new stupid mistakes. <laughs> and but you know, it's kind of a funny take on the idea that like, I think everything's in a balance, you know. Right, There's you a, need a little yeah. bit of both, and I think we're we've been in a period for a while now where we need a little bit more juice to the game. Yeah, um, sure. Yeah, I, I, like Jagex is doing a pretty good job of keeping the game I, relevant and yeah and not I, uh, I do feel like they are kind of like you remember how you brought up those past mistakes right and i want to just say the the mistakes where everyone hated the game those are mainly put in the game to stop people from rwt right. from botting from uh you know all of that stuff that they think ruined it in reality the updates that they brought out where they took away free trade they brought out different pvp mechanics where you couldn't kill someone for loot those are kind of the mechanics that slowly ended up killing the game. And right now, I just got to say, I feel like we're seeing that happen again round two yeah. as they're trying to fight off the bots, the money making. They took away revs. They keep adding random quests you have to do, even like the catch black chins. You got to do a quest, right? My main can't catch black chins anymore. I just have not done it. I'm that big of a, Is that a thing. <clears throat> eagles peak right yeah. yeah yeah it was a while ago that was a while yeah ago. just as an example they are continuously adding things to fight bots to fight gold trading and it doesn't seem like it's working and it almost feels like they're repeating what they did in the past which is a little ironic right i mean pvp yeah. is suffering now and gold selling's at an all-time high i <laughs> so, think yeah, uh really gold selling and stuff botting rwt that's why they took away free trade back in the day. They were trying to yeah. put a stop to that. They they wanted to retain all their They did profits. stop it, but yeah. it caused other problems. I mean, <laughs> dude, I, I, I think it's probably... Uh, I, I would say it's impossible to completely outline the issues yeah. with the game. Because, like, it's not perfect. I don't think any game yeah, is perfect. Yeah, no, but but um, I think be- before you know before we started the podcast, though, you, you had some ideas like of problems that people often associated as directly a runescape problem but it's more of a general problem what are some of the other ones that you were thinking of you let, know? Me, let me think back um i get a gist of of that as, as well i just can't come yeah. up with uh, an idea as well yeah it takes time. Time. but there's i understand what he's social, saying there's a couple social ideas like yes hit us polling hit us maybe that, and you guys will find this relevant and it's mm-hmm. the fact that uh for example, a lot of the problems with updates to the wilderness is that I think people have the wrong mindset about content that you release in the wilderness. If it's in a PvP situation, they somehow feel entitled to the content without having to do PvP. Mm-hmm. Whereas, Nailed it. for yeah. example, that like, say they add a new update into the wild or in a pvp situation players will say you're forcing players to pvp to which i as jagus would say yeah if you want that content that would be like someone saying hydro requires 95 slayer and then someone being like you're forcing me to do slayer and you're like yeah if you want that piece of content Dude, I always thought the Inferno was bullshit, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, do Inferno, for it, man. Go for it. Come on, man. PvPers out there who can't do the Inferno, and they're just like, man, I'm a PvPer. I want that one extra max hit. 
but Jagex is forcing me to interact with PVM content. Bullshit, bro. Now be it really, yeah. really, really, really hard PVM content. Like brutal. That's another thing that's so weird about our game is I've played yeah. many games competitively, and holy cow, RuneScape's like the hardest game I've ever played. You it, got the highest skill caps, but like, like no payoff. Now, We're doing that so stuff. Little so much game. mouse clicking, bro. You know, no, not enough so keyboard. <laughs> it is so hard. I, I could smash people at League or PUBG or whatever. And then I come play RuneScape and this game is just extraordinarily difficult. I, w yeah. I mean, I watch people do PVM and I, I don't even understand what I'm seeing. I watch someone uh, who's a like high level uh, NH Britter. I don't even understand what I'm seeing. I watch someone do a Venge fight that, and I, even using the same mechanics as me with the same weapons. And I'll have to slow the clip down and watch it six times before I'm like, oh my god, that's yeah, what happened. Yeah, their multitasking game is like, you know, crazy. It, yeah, yeah it, our, our game is unbelievably difficult. Yeah, and it, it's a game like no other. Like, there's nothing else. Th this game covers so many different, like, facets of, like, any game you would like to play. And um, to tune into the part about making, like, PVMers do PvP and vice versa... It's like that's something that's just always been the case. That's not that's Never not changed. changed. Dude, like back when I just did PvP, I didn't want to get barrel gloves. I, I didn't want to get knife like when they upped it, they they made it from Pi and then they made turmoil and soul split a thing. I didn't want to have to get my prayer up. It's like all I wanted to do was be able to compete on a competitive level and have a, a fair playing field against the people I was fighting. So it's like they yeah. they've always done that. That's not a new issue. That's that's always just been the case. Control for elite mm -hmm. void on White Wolf. I wanted to die <laughs> like a week. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. The last thing I wanted to do. Holy moly. Yeah, I think the issue with that is probably an issue of like majority bias, right? Because yeah. it's pretty clear that the majority of the people that that are you know actively playing the game, I think there's a misconception, right? There's people that interact with the community like youtube so reddit and there's people that play the game right and yeah. and and i think it's pretty factual to state that the people that play the game are predominantly people that are just going for the scaling and the pvm content you know yeah, like not and, and, and then yeah. heavily heavily focusing on the afk like runescape and chill get some xp drops kind yeah, of stuff exactly yeah and, and i can understand jagex as a company going that's our player base yeah it's and we're gonna make content for the player base i mean they just came out with a, a fishing skilling boss Ross? and pe you know some people were not happy about that because they were like dying for raids three and i can totally understand that um yes. but you pvm i bet jagex is, I, I bet Spoiler, jagex is yeah, we are we are bro, like, we are <laughs> they're probably looking at a graph somewhere saying all right, well, of all the players, like 50% of the XP gained or the actions performed in the last week were woodcutting and fishing. Let's update woodcutting and fishing. It's solid plan, solid execution, yeah. man. Like, you know, it, it's I just guess, it's the money making strat, you know, for, it's, for Jagex. It's like yeah. a little ironic that we're talking about how there's content in the wilderness and you have to go and unlock it, and that's difficult. Right. And then RuneScapers are making up their own problems saying, oh, we need updates, whatever. We want a harder game. The game's already hard. And it feels like all these complaints are trying to make it easier. Right. They don't want dangerous deaths. They don't want to have to risk anything or bring anything out, which makes the game difficult. Yeah. Scary. A big part of the of that definitely came from when they decided that uh, your deaths. items were just safe, you know. And I think that yeah. kind of like really slowly change how we perceive the game because we used to perceive the game as always being dangerous yep. you no know why they did what. that though right White yeah Rice? yeah because of the ddosing and stuff so but like runescape I, had better servers yeah. we wouldn't put up yeah. with any of this bullshit it man wrong, it yeah. was the wrong it was a good fix to the wrong problem yeah I like don't they know. fixed something but but they also opened pandora's box you know yeah yep. so, I, i'm a yeah. big i mean i remember doing haunted mine in like 2004 or five or whenever yeah. and uh i i died because first of all they didn't have guides when i was doing the quest tip dot it didn't a rune hq didn't have a yeah. guide on. Have rune back HQ? in the jurassic like, period not, they had those but the guides were incomplete and bad 
How the hell did you do the quest then, bro? Are you were you a genius at that age? You you would kind of piecemeal it together. Like some of the quests had a really good guy. Really stupid as a kid then. I don't know. Haunted Nine was not like. Yeah, no, that was a fucked up quest. (laughs) You were walking into uh, (laughs) something you didn't understand. (laughs) Anyways, I I got killed in Haunted Mine. I lost my full rune, my dragon dagger, and my dragon longsword, and it was like everything I had. I had. And you die there, and then you are you can't get back. Yeah. People didn't have teleports there. And even if you did, that stuff despawns in three minutes. Yeah. And it's just gone. Yeah. And, oh, sorry. You keep going. Mm-hmm. Man. Well, yeah, like the whole the whole mentality of the game and what I in my conversations with J Mods, which have been few, um, because mostly because I don't know that it's productive. They get yeah. so much feedback mm-hmm. and whatever, and players just yeah. saying, I want mm-hmm. this, I want that. It is like whatever. But most of what I've told them has been along the lines of when you what made RuneScape great and what kept people around um, was the idea of a world where one, all of your actions give you experience and progress towards the goal. XP drops, baby. Mm. Two, you're always building a bank or a loot stash or a coin stack or whatever. And three, you can lose any of it anywhere and someone else can get it. Yeah. Or you can get yeah. there or whatever. And the wilderness being tied into all of that was like the heart and soul of why people yeah. came I to mean, the game. Dude, the wildy Perfect. was the... you Back in the day, you're right, the mentality's changed because the wildy was the ultimate goal. And I think that in some senses, there's been such a, a shift in mindset of what people enjoy doing because it was so PvP focused and wildy focused back in the day, whereas now it's PvM and so forth. The reality with PvM I is I think that it's you're... more so high risk focus, you know, in general. Yeah. Right? But yeah. it's it's skill also. Because it, think both. about it, right? No, think about it, Rick. See, it was incredibly hard to learn PvM back then because if you died, you could fight your shit too. That yep. and that slowed down the progression of people wanting to learn PvM so much. But because Everywhere else but the wilderness is basically safe for many, many years. You know, people have basically realized that, wow, this is like content I can do for like free, you know? And then it kind of snowballed from there, you know? Yeah. Because the whole game was dangerous. Even Even a random event back then kicked your ass. You know, oh, so I yeah. looted so <laughs> much of random <laughs> break your room axe. You know I mean? But like, so, yeah, like, so like, yeah, there was no distinguishing whether, like, it's like, like, whether, whatever. If I go to the wilderness, it's like me dying to a boss. So you know, it's the same shit. But nowadays, it's like, yeah. oh, I die in wilderness, I lose all my stuff. Whereas I die Zora, I lose like nothing, like you know, like whatever. Here, here's right? my 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 view on the whole thing, right? Is the so. with PVM, it's kind of like I I feel like there's always nowadays, gonna be you know? there's always gonna be a ceiling to PVM. Because it's mm-hmm. like they could bring out the most extensive raid which lasts ages. It's going to take you X amount of time to be able to finish. But eventually, the bottom line is you are going to finish. You are going to get every piece. And once you get every piece, what do you do after that? Like, the thing with PvP is that there is literally no roof. It's like you just continue to either get better or get worse. It's like you can take that to whatever level you choose to take it to. And um, my philosophy on it is that everybody, we all play the same game. We all play RuneScape. We all do different things. Some people PvP, some people skills, some people PvPM. And it's kind of like, when there's one thing in the game which is getting a severe, like, just, like, it's just not, it's being neglected, okay? I, I, I feel like that's happened for so long. It's like one bad apple spoils the bunch. That's kind of, that's... They're taking away what we love about that part of the wild you know, i mean the, the thing is like hunter. everybody like, loves that. people love different things like p- some people absolutely despise pvp and that's fine if you don't like pvp that's not a problem at all like you do what you enjoy i don't care um but some people do and it, it's like i feel like as time's gone on it, it's like that negativity from that one specific thing in the game i feel like just the mentality it's like do you know if you're around somebody that's like really negative and you spend too much time with someone that's like a real downer, it's like eventually you start to think like that. It's like you start to see things in negative lights, right? Yeah. I, I feel like that kind of mindset has just sweeped across the community. And I think it's trickled through into other parts of the game, which, like we were discussing, I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with 
in some cases. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just people have changed, like their mindsets have changed. And I don't know, man, I'm going off on a bit of a tangent, but like I, I do think that the bottom line is if every aspect of the game and every person who enjoys doing X or Y activity is happy, you're more likely to have a more positive you know, sort of like forward thinking community, right? And like people that are more yeah. happy and fulfilled with the game. And it doesn't matter if you dislike PvP or not. It's like, it's still nice for those people and those players to have something that they enjoy instead of what yeah. we have right now, which is yeah. definitely not that. And it has been interesting. I would say this is just a thought. I'm just throwing this out there. But it's likely that the change in uh, maybe the negativity of the player base is just people growing up. <laughs> yeah, I, maybe. Yeah, possibly, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm not mm -hmm. dogging on growing up, but life's hard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we might all just be playing games when we're in RuneScape. Some of us not. It's our jobs. So, like, you know, <laughs> it's not even just... style, right? Yeah. But, uh, you know, that being said, we all, like, we were kids, and now we're adults. And uh, it's a lot of, I mean, you can think of the, like, conjure the image of the, uh, of the group of, like, old dogs sitting around complaining about everything and how hard life is and blah, blah, blah. And, like, you can see the slow shift of player base as they age just move that way in RuneScape. I, so, like, there's an example of something that I'm, I bet is not a RuneScape problem. I think the toxicity is not... I think that's a general problem of life and of growing up is that it's, it's, I don't, God, I don't remember exactly the study that was done, but negative emotions and negative experiences are about five times more potent than a positive one. Ooh. And so, if, okay. and you're, you are way more likely to remember and feel and ruminate on a negative experience than a positive one and is that why we always keep those really bad youtube comments in the back of our head even though we get so many nice ones that's not that's just how humans are wired we're really i mean we're hypersensitive to negative feedback because it's useful to us yeah um it's just evolution you know, basically isn't it it's just survival right. instincts yeah it's a survival instinct the older we get and the closer to the black despair that is the end of the life is uh the more <laughs> right. happy we get we're all just pretty much that dark hole <laughs> we are coming and we're and not coming we're over adapters out of the lack of updates in old school runescape yeah yep. so we fixed it boys the problem with runescape is we're all getting old and bitchy man all right yeah this is more of like a talk of observation you know i like that yeah. i like yeah. that idea though I got a I cool mean, question, chat. Or not, well, everyone can answer this. Just picture RuneScape, right? Best servers. Like, they're spending actual money, and it's not Roblox servers, okay? And now, next day, without telling anyone, they flip the switch. We have dangerous deaths again. They make Zora and all these crazy bosses. If you die, they like 5 or 10x that amount. Like, you died Zora once, you fucking suck. You got to pay a mil, right? Would... RuneScape be better or worse after this flip of the Switch, man? What do you guys think? I think a lot of people would quit. <laughs> I think a lot of people would quit. I don't think so. I, I feel like they would bitch, they would moan, but a week later they'd be like, wow, item prices are going back up. This is kind of cool. I guess I'll have to be on my guard, right? We just made this very easy game a little more thrilling. That's just like uh, that in old day. I think I they'd, mean, if they were to do that, they'd have to slowly, this, the, slowly here's, here's the, here, here's the deal, man. We're not pussy. Flip it, baby. This this would be too game changing, honestly. Even it, it makes even the GE tax thing look like child's play, you know? That we talked we, about last time. We literally time. had a bush that spawned twisted bows, okay? You can't tell me this wouldn't be this crazy. Oh, I mean, but, look but the thing is, they, they, you know, they, they yeah, rolled it was back, a glitch, so. though, dude. <laughs> they, they like, hey, still. look, look. It, <laughs> uh, I, I, I'll say this, right? Like, on a positive note, okay? I think the Jagex are doing considerably well. When you compare RuneScape, old school RuneScape, to say any other MMO, like take World of Warcraft for example. Uh, I don't know if you guys keep up the date with WoW, but like the, they break. Here's what WoW's done: they've basically brought out World of Warcraft Classic, which is old school yeah. RuneScape, but their version. Vanilla. Okay, yep. 
And they brought it out because people didn't like MTX in World of Warcraft. And they wanted to have the old, nostalgic World of Warcraft come out. And mm -hmm. Blizzard have just done a massive 360, flipped off their entire player base, and uh, they're putting MTX into Classic. Like, it's just going through. And I think With that this? just just that small comparison... Like, because this is the end... The bottom line at the end of the day is that Jagex, in reality, I'm sure that a lot of the J-Mods want us to have an amazing experience and that's very passionate and just, like, heartwarming people there that really care about the game. But let's not forget, it's a business. It's in their best interest to flood this game with as much, like, in-game purchases, raising the membership, because it's going to bring them more money and longevity to their company and profits. Maybe not for the game, but, like, when you just think of that, it's like this game's been out now for, what, like, seven, maybe eight years? And the only thing that we've seen is a slight increase in membership. That's it. And no, mobile, I, I, think I think when you think of biggest, that, mobile. it's I think mobile did the biggest thing for, yeah. uh, for player That's base. True. Oh, that was huge. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But like when you but think I, of stuff like that, I, I think like it's very easy to look at old school and be like, oh, they haven't done updates and stuff like that. But I just think like I, I always try to look at stuff in like um, a positive light. I always just think like it could be so much worse. Like they could have yeah. done so, like they could have ruined I mean, this game years ago. And I'm amazed the they have. Over out and go. Fuck you, go play R3. I bet yeah. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going. I, I bet they had the option to bring MTX, but that's the thing. Yeah. MTX versus making the game harder is there's two different things. Man, you got pay for experience versus you gotta go grind that experience, right? People like grinding, people like harder gameplays. Maybe we just have to remind these people where they came from, their roots, old school runescape, where you could die into a beekeeper event. You know? Yeah, what do you say, Nyron? I, I would be interested to see how the high risk version of runescape panned out i'm willing to bet that it's a better long-term solution no, than i agree i agree with you i think so once they flip the switch they might lose some people I, I but no one quits runescape forever pull though out the rug under people like that and expect your player base not to just say fuck you guys you're doing it again yeah. it's 2006 all Is over that again. much of a rug pull though I dude I it's a like... huge dude it's a huge rug they would have yeah, like th I, this is the I thing had... <laughs> Dude, Jagex, old school RuneScape, to be totally honest with you, with like everything that's going on right now, the lack of updates, the toxicity and all that stuff, like I would say we're in a very vulnerable state. If they were to just drop that bomb where it's like you die, you lose your shit, even though we fix the servers, they just couldn't do it, dude. That's a massive rug, okay? Are we toxic, guys? I actually don't know that we're that toxic. I think we're mm -hmm. fine. No, I don't think we are that toxic, no. I mean, I mean, sure. I mean, all right, sorry, sorry. If, if I may negativity yeah. not are necessarily toxicity but loudest, negativity you're talking about the loudest people in the community is what you're talking about uh, and, and, and that's like something people say about our game both in and out of the community i mean people say that about everything online and it's just that people don't have to own up to their own you know bullshit they can be a dick and then they can change their username back to <laughs> so uh, i mean <laughs> um dude i i yeah, think I like know. When you think about it, when you've got some of the biggest RuneScape content creators and streamers that are streaming chess and like playing RuneScape free, I, I think that it's a bit of an understatement to say that there's something a little lackluster about old school RuneScape. Okay, yeah, I, I truly I, believe we are. We are oh, add the sorry. spice, baby. Let's add mm -hmm. the spice. I, I I think it would. It's just a terrible time. I'm not saying it's a bad idea, no. and yeah. personally, I would like it, but I think that. Doing it like a flick of a switch, I think that's well a terrible just a idea in my question. opinion. Yeah, no, that was yeah, that was. And like, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying you're wrong. Hey, Definitely, it's just yeah. a cool oh, hey guys. brain experiment, right? To see so, what the game would be so like. I've, I've been talking about a lot of this stuff with people, like like on a daily basis, right? And like I think I think I've kind of in a way, kind of found the root of it. A lot of these problems as of late, and kind of how to you know how they all go together, how they relate to each other in a way. If that makes sense, like, you know, you're talking about all these co problems, whether it's, you know, too many items or a wilderness is too, you know, unforgiving and people don't like that and people prefer convenience, stuff like that. I think, I think there's like a connection, right, to all of these things, right? And I think it's as simple as, I mean, let me know if you guys think this makes sense, right? But I think it's as simple as starting off with the first main root cause is that this game used to be very dangerous 
wherever you did, whatever you did, right? That was kind of like the expectation, right? Learning bossing, learning how to PK, that all, all of those things were very difficult back then, right? Because there was such a, a risk to it, right? And ever since the DDoSing started happening, because, you know, Jagex has shit servers, they basically changed the game into two different aspects, right? They made PKing the same, right? Still dangerous. But they made everything else outside of PKing completely, you know, completely safe for the most part, right? You can learn any boss, and the only thing you will lose is time. You wouldn't lose your gear. You get it all back, right? And because of that many years of that dynamic, a, a large majority, a super majority, basically all flock to the PVMing side. And that's why I think PVMing has such a big, such a big bias lately, like so many Slayer updates, so many more new bosses. Whereas, and, and people were like, yeah, I'm down. I can actually do all this content. There's no dying. There, like, a dying doesn't matter. I don't lose anything, right? Great. And then anytime something PK comes out, it gets extremely hard over the years because all the people are already conditioned, you know, to just access PVM at will, right? So anything that they have to do in the wilderness is like, oh, now I have to, I lose stuff. Like, no way. This is ridiculous, right? Yeah. So you have this dynamic built up for years and years, right? Which causes certain problems, right? Um, for example, like, why are items so cheap nowadays? And guess what? All the gold farmers back in those, back in the original days, gold farming. The best they could do is maybe cut some yew trees, you know, fish some sharks, whatever, right? Maybe kill some super easy mob. But nowadays, guess what Gova farmers can do? They can learn every how to TOB. They can learn how to do every content in the game, pretty much, outside of, like, PKing, right? Because, again, who, who cares about that? Because you lose your stuff. Like, they can learn all these bosses, highest level stuff. No problem. Because all they put in is time, and they have time. Because it's, it's, like, their job, <laughs> right? So they can learn all these content. And, and that's just an example of one group but just the casual players right it's way easier nowadays to do any of those content because the most you'll lose is maybe 100k you know on some some bosses most bosses you, you you'd be fine like losing nothing right so you have yeah. this super farmable so you you know you basically have super steroided gold farmers nowadays that can do all the content that brings out all these supplies on top, of, <laughs> you know, on top of more normal players that can also do the same content and bring in more supplies right which which leads to a few problems, right? PKing, wilderness stuff, impossible to kind of like rejuvenate because nobody wants to waste their time risking stuff when they can do all these content conveniently, right? And then we're older, so that's how we feel. You know, life is about shortcuts, right? So, so you know, why go PKing? It's not a shortcut. Right. That's like, that's an obstacle. Fuck that, right? So everyone goes here. They all want PVM updates because, again, they know their expectation is that I'm going to learn this content. doesn't matter how hard it is. It's just time. It's just mostly time. So, and are, are, you, are you saying that you think... Well, are, are, do, but yeah, you think, but you do you think like they... Kind of all, yeah, yeah yep, I, no. I, I know what you're saying. I totally get that. Are, are you saying yeah. in a sense that you think culture, that if they were no. to make PVM just as punishing as what it once was, that maybe people would be more attracted to doing PKing because it'd be well, more or less the same? Think about it this way, right? It, it's, it's about the environment, right? So we're just in an environment where... Oh. Sorry, I thought you were talking about the actual environment. I'm like, oh no, no, fuck? like, like you know, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm real life, and we <laughs> lost Rice Cup. He's gone. Yeah, you know, real life plays a role because, like, yeah, you know, yeah. I agree that we get older, so that means we think everything's a ticking. You know, t time is ticking, so we have to get make the most out of it, and that's mm -hmm. numbers, money, whatever, right? Yeah, RuneScape is a, a game about making your numbers go up. Exactly. Mm, numbers. Why I'm saying that, I'm, unfortunately, we set up this dynamic where people are so used to shortcuts and ease that there's no way they're going to do anything that requires them to lose anything that they occurred, they, they accrued over, you know, years of just playing it safe, right? So that's why it's so tough right now. So unless there's, unless they can rebalance the dynamic somehow, make it, you know what I mean? Because, like, unfortunately, there, nothing's going to change, right? Because at the core of the problem is this culture of players are just so used to comfort and quality, you know, like just safe, progression right there's no loss there's no risk of loss ever right yeah so i that, agree i, I agree right now. i think that I is think the core issue really I, when, when you when you boil it down i you know, feel like if you out. rip those people out of that environment though right flip yeah. that switch if you want to say that because mm -hmm. just as an example there's yeah. some very hard games some games i can't beat not runescape right obviously there's some shit i can't do in runescape but i'm talking about bloodborne dark souls the trilogy we got these games and they are very popular and very punishing. 
And there's a lot of people out there online looking for punishing, punishing games, hard games, struggle, the grind. And I feel like RuneScape was that game originally. Yes. Still I definitely agree. has the potential to be that game now. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe we could lose a couple of lazy people. I you know, I seriously do, but I feel like I we think, gained so much more. And I think it has a, I, I'm actually probably the, the thing that worries me the most uh, is I don't like creators in this instance. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like them asking the question, what do the people want? The question that I want them asking is what gets me, what gets me idea, hard. what game am I dreaming of that makes me excited? Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, a game and so they if you're asking hey are the players gonna like it if we take away their safety no they're not gonna like it but that's the wrong question exactly. the question is what game is more exciting and long ideas game yeah. more and i think this man jagex and i think an idea of like a actual risky actual rewarding runescape experience is a is a lot more exciting of a game like that's i came back to the game because my buddy called me in like 2014 15 i don't know and said hey there's this tournament they do in on a world in runescape where you can kill everyone everywhere and it's called dead man mode and it's super crazy and i was like that's the fucking coolest thing i've ever heard of in my life that's my dream right. and uh <laughs> and i came back that's to RuneScape. Dead Man Mode sounded cool. And yeah. I didn't even play Dead Man Mode. I watched a couple other people play it. And then I went and skilled for like a year. I, I mean, but just the idea of that cool world and those like compelling ideas. I I don't get the feeling mm -hmm. that no, a lot of guys not. at the top of o OSRS right now are yeah. thinking, what compelling idea am I thinking of? The, the, what cool version of RuneScape is going to exist six months from now? I think they're thinking, okay, well, the player base is concerned about X, and like, what if we change this? And they didn't like that on Twitter, and fuck, man, how are they going to feel about this? this? I don't like, I don't like seeing that. And uh, content creators, uh, all of us here, if you know, if I'm sure you've been there, I know I have. When I'm sitting around thinking, like, what do they want to see? This kind of video is this a cool thing? Like, maybe I try this. That's I, that's fucking a waste of time. Yeah. The only, what do you want to watch, right? What do you want to make? I ever make is when I'm sitting around and I get an idea that I'm excited about and I go, oh, that would be a cool video. And I I would love, Jagex, if you're watching this, start thinking of cool shit that you want to do in RuneScape and like stop asking the players. Yeah. So they're, not, they're okay. I 100% with it. agree. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also want to. Yeah. True. I also want to add one more thing, though, because obviously uh, that. That's not that's not the full story, right? Because this is only part one. Now now it's time for the sequel. So so here's the catch, right? Obviously there was a reason why they had to make it safe, right? We all know back in you know back in history it was the DDoSing that happened. They basically I, I was I was I was playing during that time, right? The DDoS like straight up I, I should you not. It was so bad, like when literally you couldn't play for like two weeks sometimes. Like, yeah. I literally could not, like, I literally, the only world I could log into for, like, I remember, like, the two-week period, the, there was multiple periods of, like, you know, bursts of... Well, you want to run people. them down to what but, they were doing and how they yeah, were grabbing Yeah, items. but basically, it though, was um, because it, I don't, it was, yeah, it was, I don't remember this, so it must have been before I started oh, yeah. playing. It was, like, 2000, it was, it was like, yeah. right at Corp release. It was, like, yeah, right Yeah, dude, release. it was Corp, because I remember going yeah. straight to Corp oh, Cave. Goodness. Dude, the first time I tell you in the Corp Cave... I was like, why is there a fucking Carol set just sitting on the floor? And then I saw loads of like level 50s just rush in and loot it all. I was like, oh yeah. my god, I'm DC and dude. Yeah. It was so, fucked. <laughs> yeah, so so uh, because ever since Corp came out, there were multiple oh. weeks where the DDoS was so bad. I, I literally had to spend an hour just to find one world I could stay on for maybe an hour. And like I, I found that 365 was just the golden world. It it, it would you would still lag like insanely, but like you wouldn't fully DC. Is but that it was, it was okay. No, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, uh, it was a high risk one where it's the oh, skull, okay. yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But like, that was the only world that I could stand, but it was super bad. And they were, and people got so into it. Like, you know, it started obviously probably with one group of people DDoSing for people's items, but then like it, it, it obviously became like a meta thing, you know, so many people got into it. It didn't matter where you were, if, if it was anywhere that was somewhat risky, you, 
the, that that world would just get hit off. It didn't matter. Like you, you could be like just a casualty, like a bystander. You just, you know, you just everybody just everyone's got DC. What and, they do is they and, hit the yeah. world. Yeah, you would so die bad. if you were bossing a lot in God Wars, and yep. then when you died with your best gear because it was risky deaths, a lot mm-hmm. of people would log in and just grab your stuff, rinse That's and repeat, crazy. sell the gold. Yeah, and and it became a strategy. It was What's insane. Yeah, it became a strategy for like uh, I don't know, at least a month because it went people on. People really bought houses with this. Yeah, it was, like, yeah people it was are living crazy. in houses right was, now off this money. Like it's not. Yeah, so good. so the problem was obviously just so crazy. Like basically, a quarter of players could even log in at that time for like that whole month straight, and they they they, they were like, oh, you know, they were shitting their pants. I'm 100. Like they like straight up like, all right, guys, the items can't be seen. And you have an hour now. And ever since then, that that's kind of what happened. I think there's probably a, a more moderate way to do it. And I was really hoping the death mechanic rework was going to, like, you know, be the thing. But unfortunately, they made it too generous. Because what, what happens is that now if you die, you, you can just put, like, some rune plate legs or, you know, or just only pay, like, 100k, you know, in most cases of death. Which is, like, that's not the equivalent of you losing items at all. Really, it's, it's not. Right, and you have like 15 minutes to gra- grab your stuff still, or uh, honestly, infinite. Right, if you just go to the desk and log out, yeah, yeah. Higher, yeah, yeah. So, so it's not really, it's not really the solution. Unfortunately, I thought it would be, but unfortunately, no items are you know getting getting removed, and it's not it's not making it really any harder for people to learn PVM, right? For example, and and and, and knowing that the DDoS that happened back then, as severe as it was, was mainly because people love looting other people's stuff. I wonder what would happen if the time, like you know, the the despawn timer is normal, but people can't see your stuff, right? So so the so you would have this uh, situation, like in this new situation, where uh, let's say you die, you die at DKs, doesn't matter how, but you die, right? And and yeah, unfortunately, you have like the three minutes, right? So if you don't make it back, those items are gone. But the but but the catch is that no one can see your stuff, there, right? Yeah. Would that solve the DDoSing that would? Yeah, well, there'd be no incentive. Right I would yeah. like yeah. that. Obviously, yeah. looting would be fun, but if that's the only way, like they can't just yeah. pay more money for servers or however they are doing, they just yeah, can't get exactly. That, I'd be okay with because that. because I, I because I think that's probably the closest thing to to being extreme enough that it would. See, it sounds evil though, in a way, because it, it unfortunately it does stop a lot of players from trying new PVM, but it would bring back that level of danger without introducing the DDoS. You see, it's such a complicated thing because the intentions are good for sure. It's to stop the you know people from DDoSing, but it, it creates this dynamic of safe and convenience, right, all day every day, and it yeah. kills that like, and then it causes other things like you know items just being dookie because even the gold farmers can learn to PVM now, right? So uh, it's just, unfortunately, in order to solve other problems, we kind of have to be brutal about this, you know? Like, item sinks, they're, they're not going to go away, like, with, with an easy solution. There's no easy solution to fixing these problems, you know? I think a lot of the prices remain what they were is because we had, we had things dangerous, you know? Yeah. And it really slowed things Bring down. So back dangerous RuneScape. That's that's it, man. Ain't or it could be server. some optional servers. I don't know. See, I wish I wish I, I could tell you. I wouldn't I mind a reboot. I wouldn't mind a 2006 reboot. I've been, yeah. I've been preaching that for the past two months. Yeah, Take like, it away, I, baby. Yeah, I wish there was an easier solution, but like the only way is is to make things in general more dangerous. You know, PK is gonna be the same, obviously, but like outside of the wilderness, you know, there there's gonna there has to be a pretty steeper level of danger. Yeah. If I had to come yeah. up with a plan for yeah. To focus on for RuneScape for the next two years, we'll say it's a good length of time. One, mm-hmm. it would be high risk stuff. Yes, mm-hmm. make the game risky, make it rewarding. Two, uh, I want a sense of wonder. I want them to update something without asking us and telling us every fucking number and digit and yeah. little yeah. tiny about it. It's getting a little out of hand. Huh? Like, <laughs> like I get it. I get it. We don't trust you. You don't. Know, haha. You have to ask the players. Just once, put something in the game that I can stumble upon and go, holy shit, what is this? Without like, uh, yeah. post, tell me exactly what the whole fucking thing's gonna be like and yeah. revise three times before you. Like, that, that's MMOs, is running into inspiration. Yeah, right. What is yeah. Could you imagine the next day you wake up? The shooting stars update has been updated. No one's told if you are near shooting stars. Yeah, right, and just find it. 
instantly just <laughs> you're just next to it, it just turned uh, into a yeah, pvp no. odds mode oh uh, dude Dude, I, I I agree so much with that man. We we spoke a bit like about that with Alfie, and um, Alfie pretty much to paraphrase what he said was that we've changed and we like to read through stuff now. But I'm totally on your page with that, dude. Like I I miss that no, sense Alfie's of wonder. Right in a lot of ways, you know, because I think a lot of these things that happen have a good reason. It's just mm -hmm. that unfortunately, if in the, in the there's a lot of foresight, right, that you need to understand, like the long term. Right, because because for example, who would have really thought about safe deaths would just kind of kill the incentive for people to want to PK, right? Or that it, in the long term it would in incentivize massive amounts of players, even the the goal farmer, I mean, right? No one could have seen that, but you'd yeah, hope they catch on it. though. Not, like see, you hope they like two years later, like wow, this is not looking great. Yeah, That's... because like when I was playing during the whole DDoS shit, and and when they fixed the problem, I didn't think that this 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 will lead to all of this now right back then so so yeah it's it's yeah. really difficult i was to referring really to uh game updates term. by the way i wasn't talking about yeah. that just a heads up oh yeah, yeah yeah no i was just saying like unfortunately we're, we're having two can't... different conversations yeah. i get it yeah <laughs> uh no you were yeah you were talking about how yeah you were talking about how there should there shouldn't necessarily be polls for everything yeah i agree yeah i agree to an extent because we but like i was i, I was kind of talking about how like the polling system has a good intent, right? But like, of course, I'm saying long term wise, yeah. we yeah. have these it's just good, I mean, it, dude. It kills yeah. any excitement. That's that's my issue with it. Like, yeah, it, like really, it, it really, like mm -hmm. it really does. It really, it really does, bro. It just, it just, yeah. it's not spot. Like, oh, dude, there's so many, so many like metaphors you could put for this. It's just like, mm -hmm. yeah. dude, let's hear one. Right? I, 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 dude, I, one I, I mean, I always think about like. I got a dirty mind. What can I say? I always think about a fucking wife texting a husband, and it's the same shit. Missionary tonight. I'll be led on my back, <laughs> waiting for you. That's fucking RuneScape updates. That's all we get every time. It's like we know exactly what it's gonna be. We know everything. We voted for it. We know what the rewards are. It's like give us something new, man. Give us something which is exciting. You know. Yeah. Hey, yeah. At least you have a grill. You know. <laughs> Hey, PK, that's like PVM, though, because PK, you just get a little tub of lotion to yourself, dude. That's what it feels yeah. like. You jerk yourself off, man. You know? Man. But yeah, and, I, and, sorry, you go ahead, man. Well, Rise Cup, to your point, the, uh, um, oh, shit, what was it that you just said? Right? Because we were saying, because uh, we I was just talking about in general how, like, we, we, we make some big initiatives, right? To yeah. solve something. But uh, unfortunately, we don't see the long-term consequences right, of right. that. So right. yeah. the, the reason I like the MO of operating on these kind of like the vision and dreams that you have for the game being focused on um, like a positive movement towards something exciting that you can be passionate about is that there's always going to be those unintended consequences. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But hopefully the, like it's, the unintended consequence of Dark Souls is that it sucks, but it's awesome, you know. Like so, it's, a, it's a, but to the point, like there's always going to be unintended for me. <laughs> and some of those are going to be bad, but hopefully, the thing that you have made that's so exciting is worth it, because I I think that's how people are motivated in real life with everything. It's like yeah. there's always going to be unintended stuff that you don't understand. And it, yes. Stuff, it's a lot easier to make stuff worse than it is to make stuff better. But oh, I yeah. think the, the only way that you really ever see something really valuable or exciting happen is if you have... You take a leap, right? You, yeah, you take a leap and you go for something like really fucking cool. Awesome, yeah. yeah. Like in, at the back of my brain, dude, imagine a boss that just deletes your account if you die. Who wouldn't talk about that boss, bro? Okay, I'm actually down, dude. I'm I'm fucking down for that boss. That is such if a World of Warcraft idea. had that boss, I would yeah. probably go and play it just because how could it be the world the ender? Right? Yeah. Dude. I've, ever, I've heard in a long time, dude. I want to see someone yeah. fail and go, holy dude. shit, my Bro, is Mod Minty, the first week, going to be crazy. All that right? is when literally... In that game. Dude, you could even like actually try and apply that to the game and either like an Iron Man... Like, in Diablo 3, there's a, a mode where if you die, you lose your account. Yeah. They could do it like that, or they could even do it so, like, it's a boss where if you die, you lose your stuff. 
Like, there's no getting yeah. that shit back. And oh, it's yeah. like, so you have to strategize what you're taking in there. Like, that's actually not a bad idea. You can stem from that. I've I thought wanted a boss where you lose your account and then it charges you $100, right? Just because <laughs> ah. you're sitting there and also just go, $100 oh, a Jagex. And there's nothing you can do, right? Just pain. Just fucking yeah. pain. That's what oh, I, I think there might be a slight misinterpretation of what I was saying because um because like i agree that uh, updates in general should have a lot of wonder i just yeah. meant more so like initiatives to kind of fix a problem right right yeah yeah yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah we agree but there definitely the, yeah. the whole point of that is that it comes afterwards yeah. right like that comes mm -hmm. after whatever it is has came into the game because like my, my whole philosophy on like the updates coming to the game and the polling system and with Jagex is completely the same as what Nine Rain say, said in terms of like we lost Jagex's trust. They've tried to gain it back with us over the years and so forth. And I, I can very simply boil it down to this. And again, another metaphor of like if you're in a relationship with someone and they I cheat on you, okay, they cheat on you. It's like you do one of two things: uh you either completely cut that shit off and you get on with your life, or you forgive and forget. And you carry on and try to make it work, right? Compromise. And yeah. I, I feel like when it comes to Jagex, when you can see what they've done over the last like seven years with old school, it, it's like, sure, there's been a few things here and there that haven't been perfect. Sure, there a was a, a, a couple Tebos, a couple multiple max cash piles, Evil and so forth. Odds, but it's like, for the most part, whatever. they've done a really good job with the things they have implemented. And I agree. I still I, think for, this is a great game. You know, yeah. Overall, and we, for, for we, me personally. Um, I, I want Jagex to have more control. I don't think it's a popular opinion, but that's my personal opinion. I would rather not know everything, and I would rather if there's something that put, gets put into the game, or have some kind of insight into it, but not every single detail down to a T. And I would just like, I, I would like the promise or reassurance that if they were to do something really stupid, it wouldn't just be completely closed off to discuss. It wouldn't be like, oh no, everybody is going to get max cash every time they kill this goblin in, in this raid. Do you know what I mean? Like, there would have to be some sort of, like, yeah. a after after the matter of fact, it can still be talked about, and it's like, hey, the community don't like this. Let's get Maybe. rid of that. Or even just do a trial run, like you said, like, if they just threw in a random update or something, would that not be the best way to prove people wrong? Like, would that not? Imagine the world. Dude, no, but imagine if they put an actual piece of content into the game, an update they didn't tell anyone about, they just fucking threw it in. People discover it, and you can just see Reddit right now. Oh, Jagex so have they've cool, they've added oh. stuff to the game without asking us our opinions, and they're like, "Yeah, but this is uh, this is actually really fucking good." Like, would that not just be the best way to All do it? All you gotta it? do is just not read the complaining tweets, and they'll just die down after a while. I think, yeah, dude, yeah. I think it's all about balance, right? So Yeah, so yeah definitely, definitely. You know, That's my opinion on it, though. They need our feedback We're and just other asking times. for a little more romance, Rice Cup. We want yeah. Jackets yeah, for romance. Yeah, no, I agree. That's we want our saying. accounts banned and oh, shit. That's why, I'm saying, that's why yeah. I'm saying I agree with you, because think about it. Balance means that you don't always ask for feedback, you know? Yeah. Right? Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, you know? Sometimes so you decide, yeah. sometimes sometimes you like, you know, they, so after half the time, they can put a new rates in and we don't know shit about it. And I'm, I'm cool with that, you know? It, dude, I, <laughs> but, I don't know. I just, I think, yeah. like, the more I think about the polling system and the way that people are towards Jagex regarding stuff, I just think, like, if that continues, like, the game is either not going to go anywhere or it's not going to go anywhere fast. That's yeah. for sure. And it's going to drop off, doing. like... That's the reality of it. I, I just think that yeah. as more games come out down the line, it's like we're stagmented because the community are just fighting each other and Jagex are there like a fucking concerned parent trying to like make everybody happy. It's never going to work. They have yeah. to take the initiative. They have to do something and use their own heads. And even if that upsets some of the player base, it's like the best way to prove somebody wrong is by making it something that they actually fucking enjoy. Right, so it's even if the people don't want you putting something into the game, it's like go ahead and do it, and they might fucking like it. And if they do, you change their minds. Do you know what I mean? I I don't know. It's it's a difficult. Yeah. It's not as simple as that, but like you know, yeah, it just, it frustrates like me because it, it feels be, like though. we're stag stagnated. Yeah, I, don't I feel, feel like, like it's it could anywhere. be simple like that. Though it doesn't have to be super complicated. Like we should have some faith in the J mods because they obviously play the game yeah, too, they, right? They demonstrate some great content over the years. You know, like. Yeah. So I, I mean I I only spoke about the concerns, but obviously I think the the game is still uh, mostly major you know majorly speaking still in a great spot overall. 
But obviously, when I talk about issues, it's all about for me. My my purpose is not to shape the game to how I want it. I want to shape the game in the way that it would provide the most long term fun for for the most amount of players. You know, yeah. I I think more of like the survival game for for this for this game, not not so yeah. like I want it to be hard because I like things hard. I mean, coincidentally, yes, that's true. But like the the but the thing is, is that I realize that. If this game were to hold solid ground for many, many more years, we cannot, uh, we we cannot just kind of train the players to to go for everything convenient. You know, like like I don't think this game is meant to be about get as much convenience as you want from the game. I think the game is about the you know like the magic, the wonder, the difficulty, yeah. right? Like knowing that like some of these things are truly in a way out of reach, and it re- it will require some some heroic like inspiration for you to go out there and give it a shot type of deal right i think that's what this game for a long time was about and i think we've kind of lost a lot of that yeah, yeah. well you can see it yeah. in the way that the community is oh, easily. all these restricted accounts yeah they're so bored they just do romance you know for we're like for fuck it yeah, it's like, I'm not, I don't need content. I'm just gonna catch like five thousand orange lizards in this one <laughs> part of the game. Begging but, for the game to be harder. When yeah. Rice was going on in, in his monologue, have you guys seen the movie Wally? By the way, Maybe yeah, it? yeah, I seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was I just thinking watched, of all the RuneScape players. I only I watched was, it in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got the gist of it. There you go. Yeah, I'm just thinking of RuneScape players right now. There's just like really fat oh, people on those. Yeah, chairs, dude. Little yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and it's just fucking plugins from like I'm not gonna do that hand gesture anymore, but it's just like plugins and it's just dripping in, just super easy, getting fat, not caring. That's how I see the community right now. And <laughs> yeah, very, we're, we're definitely a little bit um entitled nowadays. You know? Definitely. Dude, I will quickly if I can quickly add on just like an observation. I can't yeah, wait until know. on the podcast. Instead of talking about issues with the game, like we can just talk about our awesome experiences in the game. Like I look forward to that day, and I really hope it does come true, man. Mhm. Mhm. I was going to throw hours. in there, but I muted myself. <laughs> I was gonna, like, my mic takes like five times to click that little mute button, yeah. so I was just sitting there giving it a click. Um, right. Yeah, we were gonna is- we were gonna talk about Zaya, right? I mean, you know a lot about this. I, we're we're already two hours, but yeah, we're already about two hours in. I was thinking maybe because um, we're all you know OSR's podcast, RuneScape yeah, podcast, we and we have my boy White Wolf and Jimmy who have the um, Bank Standing podcast. I think we should talk a little about RuneScape podcast, man, right? Because we're talking about how the game needs some changes or that it's not as yeah. crazy yeah. as it once was. But really, we got these content creators making content. But, you know, they're throwing themselves to random part of RuneScape, locking themselves in like Verf, right? We just have excellent content. Now we're starting to get excellent podcasts, man, for RuneScape. So it feels like we're almost carrying the game, not us, but just content in general for yeah. RuneScape. Yeah. So I, I, I know this is a touchy subject, and we maybe said we weren't going to touch it, but I, oh. I, I wanted to bring something up that I think is really relevant. Uh-huh. And uh, there was the the Oda block through his gnome off the thing. Oh. Theo reacted. We won't we won't go down that rabbit hole. There was just one one thing that I uh, disagreed with com- completely from the very start. Um, and that's that. Uh, Theo said something along the lines of Oda block you're disrespecting i did do think it was distasteful but whatever it was kind of funny you're disrespecting the game that carried you so far you wouldn't be anywhere without the game ever since i've played runescape i have felt the complete opposite since coming back i think this game is completely carried by the players the content creators agreed i i mean i i the the period from 2007 when i quit to 2016 17 when i came back this game would be so dead if it wasn't for like dozens of content creators that were just pumping out stuff loving the game getting people excited about it telling good stories um all the restricted stuff that 
uh, came up. And I'm not even talking about me. I'm talking about all the people that I w- watched that got me excited about the game. I, I have people, and now on the other end of that, I have people tell me all the time that they got back into this game because they watched me play it and the and that my Iron Man series was, you know, or White Wolf or something made, like, brought them back to the game. I see comments like that all the time in my, uh, in friends of mine's videos. Uh, I think, like, and this isn't, bec- I'm not saying the game sucks and isn't worth our time. Obviously, we're all here. But I think it's definitely the content creators and the community members. And the, like, I remember when I first made a Twitter, and I know Twitter can be a touchy place where people get offended a lot and go to dumb negative thoughts. But when I first created Twitter coming back on like RuneScape, there was like a community on Twitter of RuneScape people that I thought were really fun and said funny things and had funny little peepo memes and there'd be like some stupid frog with the Darok set on I'm like haha I love that yeah. and like uh, those people and the community of RuneScape actually carry this game and like all and er- everyone making content from Theoatrix to Odoblock to Bodhi to Mint Mad Cow, Rice Cup, Rexy and Jimmy like th- that's the reason the game is here is the creators and the and the players of the game like adding value? Everyone who's ever gotten two hundred mil in a skill has added value to the game because those achievements mean something to everybody else. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. Just to add on top of that, right off the top of my head, obviously I'm not going to talk hundred percent about the wild right now, but it's dead. But if you go to a PvP world right now, you'll find it is very active with low-level people trying to hunt Sea Engineer and Solo Mission. And it is super active. And it's not even just the content creators that brought this, but the whole community right, has made yeah. PvP world something of an adventure now. right? You can go and hunt hardcores. It's a whole mini game. There's bounties. It's They made something absolutely beautiful, man. Yeah. And let's be real, PvP worlds have not had an update for quite some time. So Dude, we're, we're like the biggest marketers. You know, right? We, That's why it's active creators. right now. <laughs> yeah, And it's not just obviously content creators, it's communities, the discords, the clans, right? Not every yeah. clan's horrible, but I mean, you got even like Iron Man mode came from the community's idea. A locked Iron Man mode, obviously, right? Zaya. Um, yep. Sorry, not Zaya. I'm not trying to get into Zaya, but I'm talking about yeah, every Zaya, right? Oh, that came, yeah. And then Trailblazers, that came from Framed. And that was a great game mode, but that idea literally came from framed not from the whole school runescape community right it we the game just seems to be flourishing with the community and content kind of creators man and yeah. not so much no, dude i mean a hundred percent man it's like content creators effectively show people on how to have fun how to play the game or just you know just how they experience it and it definitely gets people into it but like the the whole theoatrix oda block thing it's <laughs> dude it's, it's it, there's there's, yeah. listen, there's always two sides to every story and it's interesting yeah. because i can see where theoatrix is coming from um you but at the same what? time i completely think that it's so out of touch just out of whack yeah so and it's incredibly distasteful and like i completely agree with nine rain um i i think that there's some like there's some like outside sort of influences that are going on with that whole thing like I, yeah. I don't think it takes uh you know a psychologist to really look at those tweets and think yeah this guy's not really kind of thinking quite straight right now there might yeah, be something yeah, else which just cool well, this. definitely Let's, can i go ahead and just explain what we're talking about just a yeah. tad maybe yeah go for it. Actually reach out to theo or oda and have a you know podcast and talk all about it but we don't want to bring up drama yeah but yeah. pretty much oda block tossed his golden gnome and if you don't know what a golden gnome is it's a very prestigious i don't like the quotes right but it's literally they spray painted a gnome from home depot gold right that's where they got it you can recreate it but it's still a really good prize it gets your name out there i think you get some bonds it just feels good to be in the starlight of the community and oda i believe tossed his out his second story window for some subscriptions on twitch yeah it was a lot of subs I'd hey. fucking throw mine, dude. I'm, right, like, yeah. I'm bringing on, brother. <laughs> yeah. I, I seriously, I, I looked at it the first time, and my first thought was, "What the fuck?" And then I realized you could just spray paint it. I was like, "I don't really give a shit." But then Theo tweeted, and then there was some beef because he didn't yeah. like that idea. Mm-hmm. And um, 
it's just drama right now. Dude, and Theo Atrix was just trying to pick a fight. That's it. It yeah. could have been any content well, creator that day, literally. You're a hundred percent. Like the whole thing isn't even that deep. It's just, it's yeah. literally, it's literally a joke. And I think uh, Mod Ronan or ex Mod Ronan Goody, I think he summed it up the best way by saying, "Lighten up, mate." I think yeah, that's so, literally the only thing that needs to be said about this entire drama. So yeah, I'm not gonna go into exact details of the event, but um, but like uh, I I think it's definitely an obvious sign of like mental health stuff going on. So I don't I don't think it's in that's the right interest not for people it, to you know? to kind of like instigate it any further, you know? Because well, Right. Yeah. I mean, we're not instigating it because we're not going to exact details of. No, exactly, dude. You know, and it's how, like, of how, course, how you can cover it, but... it. It's absolutely fine. Like, yeah. as yeah. people that have looked at it, and it calls the big stir in the uh, community. Well, it, it doesn't mean you it have is different from giving yeah. your thoughts. Right. You can say what happened, and then you yeah. can go into. I mean, you can do whatever. You, yeah, yeah, you yeah. You can do as you. I please, just don't man. think we have time, obviously, to go in depth. Right? No. But all I'm saying is, guys, if you are going to look into it, just understand that it's probably something mental health related going on and it's not in the interest of the community to instigate it further because yeah. if i was having a meltdown yeah. it's not, i would seriously yeah. like do not instigate it further it until at least it's settled right and yeah, the dust yeah. is settled and we know actually what happened because um there's just too much that could or could happen yeah, yeah, we yeah. don't it's, know all this just, time, just be very careful when you want to add your commentary on who do you think it's wrong or right or whatever you know because it's the, the, there's definitely way more to the mental health side of it from uh one of you know one of the people involved than it's about like beef you know i think it's it's not necessarily about the beef and right? only beef that should I'd occur be is between pkers and those <laughs> shitty shit and skillers. spay hunters spay, you know, the spay <laughs> hunters <laughs> the what are we gonna talk about today yeah, by the way i was you... gonna Oh, oh the podcast, that, right? You guys didn't oh, okay. seem too keen, even yeah, though... Yeah, yeah, sure. It's yeah, let's not talk but about yeah. it, dude. Who cares about Zayn? Let's talk about the podcast, yeah. man. Yeah, we can talk about it next time. <laughs> I was just thinking it's really cool that RuneScape podcasting yeah. even exists, right? There's yeah. a couple options out there, right? We got Bank Standing, OSR's podcast. I'm sure there's others out there that do attract views. But, I mean, RuneScape podcasts weren't really a thing a couple years ago, right? I mean, yeah. we tried. the idea... <laughs> of having a podcast just for one sole game wasn't really super out there. And now people, people love it, man. And it's probably because the game is so dramatic or maybe it's unbalanced in a way you'd want, right? It's like, Oh, I want PVP updates. Are they going to talk about this? Right. Cause you don't really see people cover the topics and get this in the depth. Like we do, right. We talk about a lot of updates we'd want in the future. We talk about how they could possibly fix the game or the economy, things that would probably attract someone who really loves RuneScape to the conversation. And uh, I don't know. What do you guys cover on Bank Standing 9, Ren? What do you guys actually cover over there? We typically, well, first of all, it's unformatted. We don't even like, and un purposefully, we, yeah. Jimmy and I just decided from the get go, it was going to be a conversation. Some of them are just him and I, and then some of them, uh, we have one guest. I don't think we've ever had two. It's just, yeah, it's just been one guest. Um, and uh, the point is to, if we have a guest on, typically to um, pick their brain and uh, bring them into the conversation and, and just see how things roll. So we, we, we play it pretty loose. Um, some of them, we've we've had a a few non runescape content creators other youtubers or we had my twin on um oh, i saw that one cool. dude yeah. that was that was frightening <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I like you oh my god i couldn't believe it bro you got like a clone over there i watched the whole thing and i was just like i i was really just taken back by it. i was like the, the thing is like some twins do like you're identical twins obviously some twins do look incredibly similar but like you two i the similarities are just it's it's insane like people should go and watch, watch that. that on you need to go and Ooh, see it i was dude i just saw voice. i saw the thumbnail i was like oh my god i need to watch this and see what his brother's like are they similar are they not are they completely different and uh yeah cool dude <laughs> yeah, uh, it was fun. we reminisced a lot if you want how are we sure you're not the twin 
I'm not sure that I'm not the twin. You know, bring him the like, wild. Let's see how he PKs. Like, I, I, I've wondered that. Like, I could. His name's Adam. I'm Aaron. There, there could have been a day where my parents put the wrong baby in the wrong crib. <laughs> and I could be Adam, or they could have done it twice, and so now I'm Aaron again. Like, I don't. Uh, the mystery remains. I uh, need to write a book on that. Right. <laughs> I so I will. I'll pay someone else to write, man. I don't got time. That's don't what, pay Rakesy. It's grammar. Right, not the best. Not the best, man. That's so, spell check I actually for, wanted to. <laughs> Rakesy, this blew my mind. I didn't know you had like a particular accent that was regional. I thought. Yeah. I thought you just had a really unique <laughs> voice. No. And then no. I. <laughs> then I heard someone speak like you, and I was like, "Holy shit! They sound just like Rakesy." And then yep. I looked it up, and there's a whole part of the world where a bunch of people <laughs> sound just like you. And I know that sounds like the stupidest thing that's been said on this podcast since the last thing Min Madcast said. But like, <laughs> but I was actually baffled. I thought you just had a really unique accent. Yeah, um, so, and it is pretty unique. Like it's pretty regional. But I didn't know there were that many of you. Yeah. So, so uh, all right. So I would say that my accent is Somersetian. And it's effectively uh, in the southwest of the United Kingdom, right down at the bottom. Is and, it the Cape um, w- Yeah, we're basically the equivalent to, like, uh, dude, I think there's, like, what what's a term for a farmer out in, uh, out in Texas? One of them's a racist slur, and I don't know the difference between Are the two, so I don't like know what to say. Really? Is, is hillbilly offensive or is that the okay one? There's another I mean, one. We don't really use the term hillbilly or or red. Okay, yeah. I, I, I got one too. Hillbilly. Yeah, like moderate moderate kind. Kind. I just wanted you to be know? careful because I thought one of those was a slur. But yeah, I'm well, yeah, yeah, I mean, one that is. not typically used. H- I think H I C K is uh, is a slur. Uh, ah. Anything that starts with an H is probably a slur. So I don't. The the intro. So we're all based around a place in the southwest called the called bristol which is a city and um you have people who live in the city and you call those bristolians okay which a lot of people uh, mistake me for being a bristolian and then you get people on the outskirts the peasants and that's me i'm one of the peasants who lives on the outskirts so we i i grew up in like fields and fucking you know um like mining batches and stuff like that that's just kind of where i'm from but have you ever seen the film hot fuzz yes yes Right, so that was filmed probably yep. a twenty-minute drive away from where I live, and oh, their really? accent is based okay. off of my okay. accent. Yeah, yeah. So if I visited you, I could go see Hot Fuzz. Oh, yeah. the area where they film. Yeah, yeah. No it's way. it's uh, it, it's a place called um, it's called Wales Cathedral. Okay, Bro. but it's not W A L E S like Wales. It's Wales Cathedral, uh, double E, and uh, it's a beautiful little village down there as well. But yeah, I, I'm basically I just have a farmer's accent. And uh, it's really interesting in the UK because the UK is so small, but you only have to go, like, not that far until people start sounding very fucking different. Like, if I go up north, I ain't going to understand half the shit they say. And they're not going to (laughs) understand half the shit I say either. Do you know know, know what's funny, though? I'll tell you this, man. So uh, there was a period of time when I lived in California. So my accent's all fucked up. I've lived in different places. And um, I remember I met this bloke this one time, and he was like a Cali bloke. And uh, I met him and I was, I shook his hand. I was like, all right, mate, how you doing? And he just looked at me and he was like, he's like, what did you just say to me? And I was like, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> like he literally had no idea what came out of my mouth. He just looked That's at funny. me completely perplexed. He had no idea. So, That's yeah, funny. Amazing. That's amazing, dude. I've, I've had that happen to me before. I, I can't, where was I? This dude, I can't remember. I, I was, it took me a while to realize he was speaking English. <laughs> it was some like, it was jacked up, man. His, well, I don't know what accent he had, but I could hardly understand him. I can understand so which state. Well, I don't know. So which well, state are you in right now? Oh, I'm in Texas. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got that. Like city Texas like accent though you he doesn't know? have like a draw the, you know he yeah you don't got that whole armor yeah that's, I think that's well though that's the mm-hmm. difference between city and also country right because yeah i i sure. say i'm somersetian which is like country uh bristolian is inner city so it's like all right mate uh what's up bruv and all, all right, that mate. shit like they basically just sound like dickheads and i i i pride myself on not speaking like an absolute yeah they sound basically. bougie 
You sound yeah. brave. Yeah. Gets me. The brave. What's gets up, brave? What's up, brave? <laughs> Whereas oh, where, I, where I'm where I'm from, it's like if my dad goes into like the shop, it'll be like, "All right, me love. All right, me lover. All right, me bab." Like that kind of stuff. It's like <laughs> a friendly, bad. wholesome. Like I I don't know I don't know what kind of trouble we'd get in doing that in America, but like over here, uh, it's like, "All right, mate. You might right, be me love, on, dude. All right, me bab." Stuff like that. That's just yeah, that's very like, farmer to say stuff yeah. like that. And uh, like you don't you don't really crab. find that elsewhere to be honest. But no. Yeah. yeah. But like have you in in Hot Fuzz, I don't know the longest how long ago it was you, you watched it, but there's a scene where uh they go and see an old farmer who uh yep. he has like loads of guns and fucking bombs mm-hmm. and stuff. And they have to take like I think like two police officers to be able to translate what he's saying because he's like <laughs> rr, rr, rr. <laughs> oh my god, like if you guys I don't know if this ever happened, but if anyone ever heard my dad on stream, it's literally that, bro. And like his dad's even worse, and it's just, it's it's fucked. We're we're and like the thing is, right, is that my family's accents are particularly strong compared to a lot of people that lived around us. So it had nothing to do with like the area. It was uh, I. I, I don't really know, man. I don't know what it was. Like, right there. Yeah. I, I, I don't know, bro. I the don't know what it Fs. was. <laughs> T's and F's and R's. But no, I, to be honest yeah. with you, I've um <laughs> I, I have to, these. I have to um I have to really focus on how to speak. Like I'm not even kidding. Like even right, even now as somebody who's twenty seven years old, I have to think about what's gonna come out of my mouth before I say it. Because if I speak and I just speak without thinking you probably won't understand me too well. That's like so, it just that's it comes up, mm. it comes out all fucked yeah. up. And like especially <laughs> when I'm doing commentary for videos, I have to really like like I have slow to like down. sit up and kind of slow it down and just try and actually like articulate what's coming out of my mouth instead yo, of just saying why, it as I do. Yo, right, Rixie, is that why when you say I'll see you, it's like Ten seconds later, like yeah, yeah I got, I got to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel that pain, man, because I actually had a speech impediment growing up. So, oh really? Uh, it took a while to really learn to talk and commentate over videos. And uh, yeah. if you watch some of my videos from six years ago, it'll sound like Mickey Mouse trying to give you like a guide or something. It's it's awful. It yeah, is awful. Yeah. squeaky. Mm. So I think you sound amazing now, though. I I think it was well worth the the work you put into your voice. Yeah. Thank you, dude. Yeah, it's just it's just one of those yeah, things, man. Interesting. People like that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's just it's different. I, I definitely feel like it's uh, played to my advantage for sure. Like in terms of that's content like half, creation, that's like half the the reason uh, a friend is so yeah. popular. Like, dude, I, I love his accent. It's not his editing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he he worked hard for many years when I used to watch. I love him. your friend, by the way. Don't. Just yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm not. I don't mean that in like a bad way. I'm just yeah, saying his accent's great. Super interesting voice. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. I mean, that's, that's his the demeanor, thing, right? his demeanor, and the way he talks and the accent—they just go really well. He's like, he's like the Painting. I don't give a fuck. You know, he's I just mean, one of the biggest fuck. RuneScape YouTubers that is now um, just a huge, or no, sorry, streamers, just a huge streamer now that's not in RuneScape anymore. Raj Patel. Not oh, Indian. Yeah, dude. He's not Indian. Indian. Yeah. He's a white dude. And he did an Indian accent for like years. People love what? that really? shit. Yeah. 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 Wait, he's from RuneScape back in the day. He didn't know that? Wait, wait, no, he's... He, he faked an Indian accent? Oh, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. it, well, it was it was a fake? persona. Raj Patel yeah, was a persona. Yeah. Yeah. Where okay. he, he he was like a uh, like an Indian. So he just had a character that he was. Yeah, was kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that's what it was. And then I, I, I think it wasn't even that long ago. I think it was maybe like a year ago that due to oh god it's it's all politics and stuff but it's like some people might be offended by the fact that an accent can be funny uh so oh, he swapped okay. it and changed his entire brand to austin Is that why he did it? i thought he did because yeah. he was just smart because well I'm, you can you can go read his twitter if you want to but that, that was okay. effectively one of the reasons behind why he did it I was which is fair enough I could that He's an entertaining guy, and that RuneScape. I mean, even when he streamed RuneScape, he was just sitting at the fire cape. He wasn't doing the fire cape, right? It's like his talents lied elsewhere. Yeah, so it's I kind of already knew. Stuff was definitely once he started doing that GTA role play. I'm like, he's gonna pick up instantly. I have no doubt. I have no yeah. doubt. If he can make yeah. woodcutting fun, come on. I mean, come on. What what he used to do? Uh, the earliest days I ever saw Raj Patel back when he had like probably less than 10k subs was uh he was a part of a uh, pvp clans in multi really? and he would do um yeah yeah you can go onto youtube and type in type in raj that. patel multi clan speech 
and he would get into the team oh, yeah, speak and he would hype that shit up and he would be like yelling down the mic in his Indian accent and talking about slip uh, sipping slurpees from 7-Eleven and shit and like just fucking going off and it, it was hilarious. Yeah, he was it was his, really fucking his, funny. His ad lib stuff was really good, like for sure. Yeah, he's a really but, chill yo, guy as well. I've met him a few times now. He's a nice dude. Boys, we are running up on two hours. I think it's yeah. Any more today. podcast stuff? Fantastic podcast today, boys. Mm-hmm. I think it was great. I don't know, Nine Rain. Do you have anything you would like to leave off with? It has been two hours, but. Mm-hmm. Look at Mint always trying to end the podcast short, man. Got a good conversation. Yo, yeah. This man's like, I gotta go. This guy's like, I got Bitcoin, I gotta flip and shit. Yeah, I got time to be. Yeah, I, well, to be fair, I think we've definitely allowed ourselves an excess of tangents. I think so this podcast yeah. is perfect, and we do not yeah. need to wrap it up with Pokemon. <laughs> I th- yeah, I mean, I've said enough. Yeah. And I think, I think so, I've said my piece. My boy Nine Rain, he has bank standing. So if you want more podcasts in your life, go check that out. Of course, go drop. Yeah, very soon well. we're we'll good as well. And yeah, um, sorry, what Rice? What were you saying? Yeah, very soon we'll have a Marvel size crossover, and we'll have like the Association of po- Podcasters. I'll for trade Wednesday. Jimmy for any one of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to get my boy to make a layout for like twelve people or something. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, but check out his link. Seriously, yeah. great series on YouTube. Um, Yo, Nine Rain. It was great to have you, man. Yeah, thanks for having me.